Greetings. Welcome back, everybody, to week two, day number two of the Archon Team League Championships. My name is Frodan. and today I'm joined by Nox from Team Complexity and Gar from Tempo Storm. Yesterday, Gar was a player, but today he is our guest caster. And Noxious, this is his first time casting as a, a new minted caster member of the ATLC. How's it going, Noxious? I'm doing great, actually. Pretty excited to be here. I've been following the, the series at this point. Like Yesterday's matches were pretty awesome like i remember that zelly game so i really just want to see uh where this will all end up pretty happy to be a part of this that's right yesterday we had a great selection of games uh highlighted by force and boys uh versus value town which was really close and then we had uh tempo storm versus archon which didn't go so well for tempo storm in the final results um how, how's everything happening in your camp as well as the team gara i mean my teammates did well i got ruffle stumped so <laughs> <laughs> All right. Feels bad for me at least. So we invited you to cast, start the yeah. retirement path. Against, I have to uh, quit my my pro gamer career and start casting. So I'm gonna yeah, focus on right. that. It actually after, feels really bad. Our jobs. Mm -hmm. Because like it feels worse when you prepare a lot, and I feel like I prepared a lot, especially for this match because we were one game behind. And then when you get ruffle stomped, anyways, then it's like it feels really bad. Well, you still got a lot of time. I mean, the thing is, the league, um, and we can go ahead and explain the format. The league has eight teams. At seven of them, always have a chance to keep fighting on. So as long as you're not eighth place, you still have a chance to make the final playoffs. Um, but before we actually go into that, let's go ahead and explain the actual format of how ATLC ends up going. It's called um, a Team Conquest format, uh, where you have six decks per team, and you play a best of 11. And the way that works is that each player brings two decks and they represent an entire lineup. The only twist is that you have to make sure that no player loses twice in a row, otherwise he becomes benched. Uh, and that means that they can't play until another person uh, on the team is able to grab a win. So for example, yesterday what happened was it, Temple Storm started off with like an, an early win with Hyped, but then Gara lost two, and Gara couldn't play anymore, so they had to go to someone else like Eloise, etc. Um, and so that's going to be continuing on today. We don't change any format until we go to the next stages of Phase 1.5 to 3. The way that's going to happen is that the team 6th and 7th will play for uh, you know, a, a match to go into Phase 2, and then we take those four teams and pick two of them to join the top two teams, in phase three it sounds sounds a little bit uh, complicated but there's a lot of money on the line so we want to make sure to increase the amount of games to decrease the variance ultimately because if you're a team that gets eighth place do you really have any excuse at all of like you know getting unlucky it's like to lose that many matches and to to not have any good results whatsoever i think uh, people could definitely say like the, the difference between like a first and second place team and an eighth place team is is pretty significant wouldn't you agree gar uh, but honestly, on the other hand, I think all of the teams are strong. Like, there are no weak links, and someone has to finish la last place, right? Yes, you can yep. argue that. It's, but it's on the other hand, it's very difficult to place first place. So you have to beat all the other very strong teams. So yep. yeah, I'm pretty sure that that will not be random who's going to finish first. Okay, sure. sounds good, sounds good. So far, Force and Boys is first place for now. Um, Noxious, you've been watching a lot of ATLC. Uh, anything that has been sticking out to you storyline-wise or uh, maybe even some memorable moments? Um, I think Druid is kind of what sticks out for me so far because a lot of the players who did bother bringing it, it's been kind of on the cusp of being good, but at the same time, not really. Like It's one of those classes that, I mean, it comes back in, it cycles back in the metagame, but... I think this time around, and this is the first time I can say that about Druid, it doesn't feel like it's cycling back in the metagame changes anything. Where When it's mm. done that before. Uh, it's like the first time where I just feel that way. Okay, yeah. I think um, some teams are actually coming down on Druid. Uh, you know, you, you bring six classes, you, ha you feel like you have to eventually pick up one that might be weaker than the others against the field, right? We see some people bring Priest, some people bring Shaman. Um, Paladin, and in this case, Drew is entering yeah. that mix of like, well, maybe I'm not sure if we bring it. Uh, even Warlock got a little bit miffed yesterday through, um, you know, Value Town not bringing Warlock and end up potentially cost them, or maybe it was something that uh, Trump felt like Paladin was better at. But I think it's interesting to see what the teams approach. And today we have much more of the same thing because we have Cloud9 versus Team Liquid here. Um, you know, what, what do we expect from these two teams? 
uh, noxious. Like, are, are you looking for either of these teams to come out as a favorite, or do you think they're evenly matched? Well, I'd say they're evenly matched. Like, of course, you know, Colento and Strivecrow being the two bigger names as far as the uh, the scene goes. But, you know, Liquid has sick players as well. Like, Sho and Naria have been doing very well. The last week, I don't think they lost their their games at all. I think they both went 2-0. So, again, they've been very good with the decks they picked. I think it all comes down to, to whom you assign which classes, um, mm -hmm. ultimately. Like, some players are much better at specific archetypes than other ones. And you have to capitalize on that. And I think they did it very well last week. So, if Liquid pulls that off again, again um and Kalento's again gonna get maybe uh hopefully this time around he gets a better result with the classes that he picked um they definitely are evenly matched i'd say hey, yeah it's interesting uh, to me because uh and sorry i'll let you talk in a second it's just interesting to me because um before i forget like savitz and uh you know monk were telling me that they feel like they're actually underdogs in the league that people don't really consider them uh, you know, one of the favorites to do well. They think, like, you know, there's a bunch of other teams getting much more hype. Even, like, Team Celestial is like, oh, if I were to pick a Dark Horse, it'd be them. It's like, well, where's Team Liquid fit? And they're not really, like, the underdog or the favorites. Uh, do you agree with that at all, Gara? Uh, I, for, for me, they're the number one favorite to win the whole thing. Like, really? No wow. questions. Yeah. Like, I... No question. Yeah, like... The the, uh, the performance last week was insane. Like all round, all players with all decks. They're all all six of them like are individually very skilled players. But um, Liquid are favorite in this matchup. Also, how they played against um, Team Celestial that was insane performance. Like because they work also together as a team, and that's like the small disadvantage Cloud Nine has. As a fact, I know they they don't really talk together, like discuss strategies, and it's very very important if you wanna like finish first place in this tournament. You can't just be like individually skilled. You need like a strategy. You need to have like a um, yeah, strategy, how to pick and what decks to bring in and stuff. And I think that like uh, Team Liquid has everything. They play a lot of games. They're very, very strong with their main classes. They bring a very good roster. They, they bring everything to the table. They really yeah. have everything to, to win this tournament. I agree. Yeah. They have some creative players. They have some rock solid players. In fact, Show, I want to give a big shout out to Show. He's been finishing really high on uh, Legend Ladders every single season on both regions, Europe and America. All of them. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's true. Nyria was doing the same thing too with uh, Malago's handlock. So these guys are something to be feared. But uh, before we do that, we want to go into a player video to get to know a little bit better of our players. And today, our feature is Kalento from Cloud9. Hello, my name is Kolenta and I play for Team Cloud9. As a Hearthstone player, I'm mostly known for having a good performance in tournaments. Um, some people think that I'm a good deck builder. The so format of, of a team league is a conquest. All players win two decks, and it's best of 11. Interesting format. So basically, teammates are sharing responsibility for much outcome. I want to say thanks to everyone for supporting me and uh, keep doing that. I appreciate it. All right, so uh, like you mentioned, even though Cloud9 isn't the most, uh, I guess, together team compared to some of the other squads we have in ATLC, their individual skill certainly can carry them. Um, when you think about some of the most iconic players in Hearthstone, two of them belong in Cloud9, and Ecob's been there for a long time too, uh, as one of the best players, not only just in Germany, but uh, in all over Europe as well. So take a look at the lineups. We have Hunter Warrior, Rogue Mage, Paladin Warlock for Cloud9. And differences seem to be Druid versus Paladin on the other side here. And people have been flopping between Druid and Paladin as kind of like the number six, um, you know, with a shout out to uh, being able to see a priest once in a while, Gar, wink, wink. Uh, how, how do you feel about these guys' lineup when you take a look at it? Um, if I can go first, I just feel it. it's kind of weird that there's absolutely... Uh not a single shaman being considered because I think it's still like even though it's one of the weakest classes, um, I feel some players like a Hawkeye is a good example of that where he will stick to it and I don't think it's a class that's going to lose necessarily in a conquest format. Like it's not something I'd play in a last hero standing necessarily. Um, but in conquest I think you can abuse some of the matchups it's gonna run into, say Paladin and Handlock sometimes. Um, if you can target those, I think it makes a bit of sense. 
Yeah, I think um, for, for Liquid, it's all about the Druid. Like that you pick a right matchup for the Druid. Because, right. Like you mentioned earlier, it is really like the weak link of a, of a setup. We saw that like with Oskaka that he like almost got reverse swept. But also other teams were struggling with Druid. You really need to get like the, the right matchup. And the, the best matchups for Druid are controller if, if they bring that, which is rarely. But Freeze Mage is like the number one deck because almost everyone brings Freeze Mage. And then, yeah, there's actually not many other matchups that are good for Druid. But it's like overall a good like deck against <laughs> anything in a sense. And that's the, uh, the Druid is like the infamous six deck. Like you have yeah. to bring six decks and every team has like five good decks. And then you have to go for something like a priest or a shaman, agro paladin, druid, and druid is like in the same boat. And Savish is like, in my opinion, the best together with Ty is like the best druid player in Europe. And so it's like no surprise that he's like very conf uh, confident. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't forget about Thais, uh, right yeah, yeah. but you, you picked him up, two. obviously, makes a lot of sense, I think. All right, so turns out uh, we're in the first game with E Cup and Naria, War versus Mage. Yeah, but more specifically, it looks like it gravitates toward the Patron Warrior right. uh, versus the Freeze Mage. Now, Patron Warrior versus Freeze Mage is no—it's not as bad as Control Control Warrior versus Freeze Mage, um, where you can stack up a bunch of armor. Oh, but wow. I know some players still feel like it's a little tough for the Freeze Mage because Patron Warrior is good at being able to apply um, a decent amount of pressure while still racking up the armor. Uh, but it's definitely not as bad. What do you think about this matchup, Gar? Like, what, what is there like yeah. percentages that you can assign out, or is there just a general? It's actually like, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, because there's different strategies you have to go for. Like, uh, as a freeze match, you can theoretically fatigue the Patron Warrior if everything goes right. But the main strategy is obviously to try to draw the Antonidas plus Emperor Alex Strauss and all that stuff, and just rush him down before he draws the Armor Smiths. Mm -hmm. It's like very dependent on. Who draws the key cards first? Like for the warrior, double armor smith is obviously if you get like a double armor smith with emperor, you can stack up hundred armor or whatever. And then the, there's no chance to win as the freeze mage. It's just and then you just wait for the double frothing and OTK him. Um, but one interesting thing is that many like uh, I talked with many pro freeze mage players and they think the counter to to tag the freeze mage is like double flame strike. And I've see nobody going for double flame strike. This is like actually very important to just to deal with the patrons because you can't really clear patrons of Blizzard. Yeah, that's a great point actually. I really like that. Like otherwise you really need to get a board wipe exactly on point, uh, whether that's you know you have yeah. spell damage in some way. I guess there could be an argument to be playing spell damage instead of that, but in freeze mage is kind of hard to fit in. Um, besides Blood Mage. But yeah, the, the, the playstyle actually changed a little bit from uh, Patron. Like the like one or two months ago, it was really a focus on just getting the Patrons out. But now it's more like a focus on just killing your opponent with double frothing. <laughs> yeah, the cycle heavy metagame or the cycle heavy version of the Patron seems to be much more equipped at the metagame because people feel like they play much better around Patron. No one's leaving two attack or less minions on the board you know they're, they're really trying to make sure to minimize the effect of it they're also like trying to minimize the amount of minions played on board um yeah. but like even though patron doesn't necessarily need to, the minions on board execute being burned here um yeah i like that from the area he pinged the acolyte of pain uh from ecop just to make him draw an additional card you never know when you're gonna remove something absolutely crucial to his uh, win condition yeah he got the emperor which is kind of good but as you can see, it's not too much value. His double inner rage, execute, answer go goal, a lot of cheap cards, real wind. Just a frothing, which is like a key card. But he doesn't get it on patrons or warzone commander or anything else. Wow, the second sweep on the Thorson is going to be so nice too. Just wow, to set yeah. up things really cheap. I've like, never seen someone winning a game with losing a game with double Emperor mm -hmm. turns. Mm -hmm. Except he has yeah. like no cards in his hand. Yeah. Well, he could get some with the Acolyte, I guess. The thing is, he really has to keep his Whirlwind to make that frothing an OTK, effectively. Maybe. Yeah, I think uh, he wants to at least try to get other cards of value into his hand. Um, I was thinking maybe even cycling, uh, slamming the Acolyte. Uh, but I don't know if he wants to par he actually part ways with an Inner Rage and keeps uh, Thorson alive. I don't know if that yeah, matters yeah. or not. 
Oh man, that sucks. This is so tricky because you, you want a whirlwind, but then you're like, wait, I can't do that. My, I really want that second trigger. No, inner rage is fine to use. Like the cut, yeah. I w you might actually even consider like inner raging the acolyte to get the effect yeah. on another card. Mm, and, I agree. And, and inner rage is really not a important okay. card. Well, with double frothing, it's a little bit more damage, but it's not going to be. Uh, the biggest deal. So Alex getting picked up here. I mean, this is gonna be... Do you think he's gonna go for the rush or try to mail his opponent as much as possible? When you look at the real face, he's like super yeah. hard. He's like, <laughs> he's oh like, my god. Coming up. Could double Emperor, I'm dead. Yeah, rest in peace, Snaria. <laughs> Contemplating the end of his so life. Cheap. <laughs> his whole hand costs three mana. <laughs> <laughs> the the thing like about... The thing yeah. about the Patron Warrior, too, is that you don't need to have any minions on your opponent's side. You can create 40 damage through two Frothing Berserkers just with your own board, assuming you have a Dread Corsair or, you know, maybe an Unstable Ghoul that you can wipe out and, and get some There's rolling patrons, damage. Yeah. Yeah. And I was your own Patron. yesterday. Like, you, he can play his entire hand and then play an Ragnaros on 8 as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, welcome to Frothing, uh, frothing Warrior. It's not is, even is patient it really anymore. The frothing berserkers. Everyone keeps pointing at Warsong Commander as one of the m main culprits of making this deck like far too explosive because it's what oh. gives it charge is the the biggest I, problem. I, I actually would even go away from both and say Battle Rage because yeah. Battle Rage was always broken, but in this deck it it is like it works. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like initially, you remember Battle Rage was changed a few times, but Warsong Commander as well. Like it used to enable the O2K with Molten's, then it was changed, and Charge was changed, and everything kind of was dormant for a long time. We really didn't need to worry about it. And then Patron comes up. And it's like, hey, you remember all those cards you thought would never see play again? Well, you know, jokes on you. They're all it's so back. crazy when you play against the deck about um, the things you have to play around. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as he plays an Acolyte, you have to prevent three draws or two draws. As soon as he... Like, you have to play around the turn 6 Emperor, you have to play around the Death Spite, mm -hmm. you have to play around Battle Rage, you have to play around the Patrons, you have to play around the Frothing OTK. It's like so just too many things. Double Mass Dispel, double Light Bomb, so Harrison Jones, double <laughs> Priest coming up. For, like, I'll, I'll solve all your problems with one thing. Snipe. Go. <laughs> oh man! Kill the worst on commander, and their strategy dies in the water. <laughs> yeah, and they'll never expect it either, right? <laughs> they'll just be like, "Wait, what? What just happened?" Yeah. Oida did that to someone. I remember, like, he played against Patron Warrior and Rogue, and he killed a Drake, and then killed the Warsong Commander on the following game. I was very amused. That's like a new level of saltiness. I was pep uh, watching Purple <laughs> Drank playing Snipe Hunter, and people played around Snipe, and he oh, was man. like. Oh wow, was he sh <laughs> That's really funny if you're like Poor playing purple. your friends. Oh, the armor smith here gets developed, so he's gonna be able to get himself uh, some armor. Yeah. Get a range of the card draw with battle rage. That's almost that's too many cards. Actually. Yeah, I was gonna say that's like getting a bit maybe too high. Maybe just cycle the inner rage and kill the uh, doomsayer. That they that that really nerfed Patron Royal. Oh. oh. Happened. Right. Zale happened. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is not good for Ika. He forgot. Ikaf. Like, the he didn't way attack, from his... Yeah. He, just, he, ran he out forgot of time. to kill it. He, ran yeah, out he just time. ran out of time, man. He, he, he queued uh, it up, but I think he tried queuing it up, but it just wasn't fast enough. Oh man, he's, hand he's capable of handling the Blinktron from the area, but... Yeah, he but... He burnt also something, right? Mm -hmm. Not only is he, um... Like, he's not drawing another card because the Acolyte died, but he also lost his armor smith without gaining more armor. Uh, that is insane. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Aria will just unload the Frost Bolts and the two Ice Lances, and his opponent's going to be so low on health. I don't see the yeah. OTK coming right up. There's an Ice Block set up, so the amount of damage that Ecop has to prevent here is just too too big. Yeah, that that was uh, unfortunately a, a sloppy outcome for Ecop just because he was not able to get it. Because that, that changes a lot here, whether or not he's able to potentially survive with all the Whirlwind effects on Armor Smith. Um, he would have had better resources at his disposal. He would have oh. dealt with Alexstrasza more efficiently. He picks it up at least. He does get the Armor Smith for all that's worth. I okay. don't know yet how much oh, that's worth, but... With a little bit, it definitely helps. But his opponent just converted uh, into four fireballs, and he still has a pyroblast. No, no, no. That's forty damage of burn. Um, and I, I always think warrior is great and be resilient, but not that resilient. Double armor smith would have been crazy though. 
What's and interesting is last week Colento was their patron player, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they they mixed that up. Uh, that Eco plays it. Well, Maybe he's like more confident or so. I don't know. Maybe he saw misplays. I don't know. That's but definitely possible. Was they, might, they might have discussed it a bit. Which I think this is like interesting. Usually um, you discuss like who plays which classes and then you stick with it. Like because uh, yeah, you practice those classes that they change them. I think this is interesting. Uh, but this is like yeah, GG. Yeah, he queued up his okay. actions at least. Um, for all that's worth, so that's gonna force an area probably to just unload all the fireballs over two turns. What if Ecop has that crazy Kazan Mystic and area just goes all in with the fireball? Damn. What if? Well, I, I don't know. It's still tough to say. Um, he still has two whirlwind effects, and the armor smith can gain a, a lot of life here. Mm, yeah. He has a gazillion fireballs. <laughs> a zillion, that's about right. I feel like Patron is only kept in check balance wise by the rope. Like, Blizzard is probably gonna keep the rope as it is just because of Patron. Like, that deck is not broken because rope. Because no Dormu. Oh man. Because people are not taking that in. That's their fault, man. I have that. I have a few decks if I ever face Life Coach or Trump. They'll yeah. have Miss Dormu. What you need to do is start recombobulating your nine drops into Nosedormu. I know Just Sane was doing that for a while, like uh, some uh, Control Warrior variant who was using Recombobulator. Yeah, it makes sense given that how many heavy legendaries you have already. Sometimes it's a heal too, because there's like, if you recombobulate a giant, there's really no other card that costs that much, so you just heal it back up. Oh my goodness, more fireballs. I if you think about it, would it have, I mean, yeah, the whirlwind effects would have changed uh, the outcome. I was going to say, like, would it have mattered, really, if the Armor Smith had lived with the uh, Acolyte? Oh, yeah, I think it could have been a big changer because of a uh, double Armor Smith getting a lot of whirlwind effects. And his opponent only had Frost Nova. He finally drew Blizzard, but he would have doubled up the armor he gotten, I think. Right. Um, with, with better card resource at his disposal, too, because remember, he lost three cards, he had to dump a few more. He would have had a full board of Whirlwinds going on double armor smith. Yeah. That's, that is a yeah, lot that's right. of Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the double armor smith, I think, is a key point. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, usually you save, you never play just one armor smith. Mm -hmm. But that was like a little bit of a face palm. Like, where. <laughs> a little bit. E a little was, bit, yeah. E Cup was more than face palm. Yeah, like, face desking at this point. Face <laughs> desking. I mean, Naria has like 12, 18, 28, plus ping, 29 damage. Easy. Um, well, I actually, I think this is, is this enough damage to actually pop the block, which is funny enough. <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> and, like, yeah, Patriot still manages to hypothetically threaten the Freeze Mage. Yeah, actually, uh, it's just short, isn't it? Oh no, the 5 damage is actually yeah, enough. Yeah, 5 oh, damage yeah. is quite enough. That is so, so funny. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. That was, uh, that's 29 damage, I think, right? And, uh, or 20, 28 damage. So funny. Well, uh, Nairia takes this one very convincingly. Pyroblast to wrap it up, and Team Liquid off to a good start. And again, you know, I can't put enough hype behind Nairia. Um, I only can say it so many times. I think that he is uh, probably one of the most underrated players um, in the entire league. People look at other guys to be more hype that might be up and coming. They're finally paying attention to Tiddler and some of the other guys on Celestial. Um, you know, they look at like, you know, Kibler and Dog over on Value Town, but don't, don't ignore guys like Nyria who are super rock solid and yeah. very innovative too. I think uh, something about Kibler is that he his performance up until this point hadn't been you know stellar, but he's been doing super well in the Archon team league, so people pay a lot of attention to him. But Nairia has been like around for a long right? time. Yeah, he's four zero. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah he's but undefeated. Just, is he the only undefeated player in the league? Uh, yes, if I'm not mistaken. Unless uh, I think who else was undefeated? Shocky was. Firebat was. Oh right yeah. Th no, oh, Shocky no, is still undefeated. He, no, he actually got Pally and Hunter to one zero each. Uh, yesterday. Okay. All right, that's right. That's right. So Chalky is also undefeated. I'm sure there's going to be um, uh, some kind of stat tracking for that. I believe Amaz said that the person who performs the best individually gets a five thousand dollar bonus award called the Master of Duels. Oh wow! In which case, I you know lambasted him for calling it only, Master of Duels for about. Only if you qualify for the land finals. That's oh, depressing. Um, that's, that's probably it. You know, I, I think it, it, what they probably oh, wow. do is they probably take the best performing player out of someone who goes to the offline finals. Right.
Yeah, but that's depressing. Imagine you don't go to offline finals, but you're but the you're best like, performing player. You're like twenty and zero for your team. <laughs> that yeah, that. I'm the new team. Really that's the team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, with this win here with Naria, um, I just wonder, like, is it Rogue? Um, he he's got a really good Rogue play, but I know the show played it a lot. So I wonder what the decision was to sw switch maybe the Warrior and the Rogue between both players. Cool. What? Uh, I think as long as you're relatively comfortable, and it could be that Clemson just wanted to play other decks, and then they didn't want to give up Warrior at all. Um, it could be something like that. Or Ecop, maybe he's saying, I played a lot of Patreon, I feel comfortable. And Kalant is like, okay, I'll just take something. Else. Oh, no, no. Like, no, Ecop has the Warlock last. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Strifeco has the Warlock. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, yeah. And I think just mixing up is fine too, because it keeps play styles hard to predict. Uh, as long as you're equally proficient at them, right? That's the, like the key thing. Because if Ecop's not as good as a Patreon Warrior player as Kalento is, then, um, then you're actually exposing yourself to potentially drop win percentage points that you don't need to. Mm -hmm. So, how many uh, how many games have you seen before where Patron Warrior actually lost because of a rope problem? Like those are really like it seems to happen very frequently. Like most most of the time, I'll see like one game in a tournament has decided on that. Mm -hmm. um, even tiny things like what Ecop had happened to him here. Like it was obviously an oversight not to kill a Doomsayer or a rope thing, more so mm -hmm. than just something he would do naturally. It, I remember, I think also in HTC, like where Zale had a game with Patron and he started immediately the turn, like the the frothing with armor smiths and stuff, immediately, like as soon as it was his turn, he started the turn and he still missed like nine damage in the end. It's like, Whoa. It's, some turns are like, you just don't have enough time, like to do them. Was that the game against you where he ended up like um, missing the lethal? No, he was playing against. Um, was that was that yesterday, or was it last week? I, I think he, Zela has has had two events so far happen to him in this. Uh, but he started season. immediately. Like, yeah, he, he didn't waste time. He didn't even think about it, and you yeah. still don't have enough time to to finish the turn. Yeah, that's what that's what we get for Blizzard nerfing the rope sometime in the beta. Like it went from ninety seconds to seventy. Like still I think it was Max Ramus act, um, around that time. Yeah, because they released Belcher and they said, we want to make your life miserable at the same time. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> I forgot about that, where the slime took like a year and a half to literally you know, be excreted out <laughs> of the body of the slime Belcher. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I think there's a slime here, but I can't tell. Enter. <laughs> um, actually, um, there's a famous game between Savitz and Kibler where uh, they I think either Savitz or Kibler forgot about the slime and then like they just died because of it because like the slime just attacked the druid for one damage. <laughs> like he was at one HP and then he the, forgot to like yeah. Well, <laughs> little slime that could. All right. Well, this is a yeah. couple of interesting uh, opportunities to go for the curve here. It seems yeah, like. You, oh, go ahead, Gar. If he goes for the shredder, he has like no play for the next three turns. That's yeah. that sucks. Would you? Go as far as to keep the Thor the to keep the innervate for the Thorson, so that way you can like make everything else cheaper and fit according to the curve on uh, five like, and six. Yeah. It really depends what Ecop does. Like now with the looter, then now he has the option to just hero power and kill the looter. So he will probably just go for it, and then he can the emperor next turn. But if yeah. if he wouldn't have played the looter, he has like the claw into Shredder. And then he might pick up something because Druid plays like five, six, five drops. It's very likely he draws into it. Now yeah. he just goes for the Emperor, which is very strong, obviously. Like also, if he doesn't have an answer to kill it, and if it, like if a Druid gets an Emperor for two turns, it's it's GG. Oh, especially if Ancient of Lore manages to follow up mm -hmm. on yeah. uh, Emperor Thorson, like on on the second turn. That is just way too much. Is it possible um, that it actually will be able to, though? Because looking at the hand from uh, Ecop right now, he doesn't seem to have an answer to it. Even with the inner rage trade, he'd still have to pick up a weapon at the very least. That's, that's oh, three he's, draws. To yeah, actually. he's got three draws to do it. It's not impossible. So Vish is considering the Keeper as well. It's like mm -hmm. nice to silence the Acolyte because that's one way to lose. If the Warrior draws too many cards, right. the Emperor might not be enough. Yeah. There is a good way for this to work out for Ecop though. If he gets Death Spite this card. Oh, that's important. Oh, that'll if do he got it. Death Spite this card, he killed Thorson, and then for turn five he had yeah. Inner Rage and Grim Patron Whirlwind combination. That's that's another GG combo. Yep. 
Nah, yeah, he didn't just... get the weapon, so might as well use inner rage. Yeah. Oh okay. wow, he's gonna be able to coin that out next turn, sitting with the patron and double frothing in hand, and the commander. Oh. Goodness. Okay. That's a really strong emperor from Acob, because yeah. he gets it on the patron and on the frothing and on the Warson commander. It's like the three core cards. Yeah, he's just missing like a whirlwind here or like an execute. Yeah. But if he picks up a whirlwind, man, is that enough? It's one mana. We're seeing an answer from the opponent though, and it's also gonna scare Savitz out of his mind. Like yeah, this is Emperor the card that carries it. Yeah, for both decks the Emperor is so important. Hmm. What's the best way to deal with this? Because originally you wanted to drop the Ancient of Lore, but now you have to deal with the Emperor, so you just hero power to play Drew the Claw. And you trade with your Pilot Shredder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's the annoying thing. You have to kill Emperor. You can't let it live. It's like no way. It's like 0%. Mm. Well, you, you can if um, you're a secret spy I mean, for Cloud9. And you, so could, you could <laughs> draw the Claw Charge into the Armor Smith <laughs> and the uh, hero power with the Pilot Shredder. What's even like the best drop out of a pilot shredder against um Patron Warrior? Hmm. I don't even know. Mana Wraith. <laughs> After that Emperor. Oh, <laughs> Mana Wraith. Wraith. Yeah. Really funny. Mana Wraith is not bad. Lord Walker Show is actually pretty cool too. But... Oh wow, Wild Pyro. Wild Pyromancer not the best. is not the best if uh -oh. you want to kill off the patrons. <laughs> um, I guess you can trade at least one. The spells are interesting dynamic there. The Neuro Neuroba Replot is also pretty good. Because mm. it doesn't affect any druid minions, but it affects oh, yeah, all of them. I guess. But it then affect, like cruel task, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, cruel taskmaster and. Oh man, guess, it could be salty. No weapons. Hmm. A lot of people cut the one uh, war X. I don't know if Ecop did as well, but like it, if it is the case, you see that it can be bad in some situations. Like not having any weapons is really really right. bad, especially against druid. Yeah, this is a scenario where the Fiery War Axe would have been great to so basically clear the what you see on the board here for the next couple turns. Mm -hmm. The really bad news, too, is that Harrison gets easily challenged by what's on board, and he can develop a free Ancient of Lore and just continue to threaten the same exact thing while even pushing for damage. Yeah, like, which is the, the way it went. Is Armsmith even worth dropping here? I, I don't feel like it is. Oh man, that's so sad. That like he has a free free real shade and you can't kill it. Yeah. I yeah, mean MC this, tech. this gives Savish also so many informations. He knows hundred percent he has no weapon. He shouldn't be like it's pretty solid to go for the lore, I think. Yeah. And if, um I mean you have to trade if only for the fear that something crazy comes out of this, right? You might like after the Emperor turn, aren't you just afraid of some kind of frothing burst? There's no weapon, so the odds of that being in his hand are much higher. At least from your yeah. perspective. I don't know. He's I get a little wary. Face though. with the shade. Might trade because it's like a positive trade, but I wouldn't be surprised because if he had a way to kill the shade last turn, he would have done it. So that's, yeah, that, that's a good interesting. point, actually. These are both effectively five fives for the yeah, and for the druid. Field, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that attack is, for example, very very interesting. It's a very good play because yeah, the damage matters a lot for Druid. Yeah, that's, it's it's a really good point. I like that analysis. Seven mana gives him the ability to drop patrons with the cruel taskmaster and the war song. Mm. Like a whirlwind yeah, that, from the emperor would thing. have actually been amazing. That's the thing I'm, I would be worried about, I guess, from the druid's perspective, is if there was a whirlwind in that hand with the frothings, like this extra shade and this extra Harrison Jones really account for a lot of more damage. It um, feels like it should be but, okay, though, because you can yeah. clear the board here, which is what you definitely need to do now that druid's like starting to pressure you a little bit. Because you can use the Cruel Taskmaster body into the Pyromancer, <laughs> and you can use the w the initial damage Grim yeah. Patron. You, you have to. You have to, actually, yeah. I mean, you're there dead you to Savage Raw. Right. That's oh, okay. which is really funny is that with Wild Pyromancer, you actually can't force nature and Savage Raw. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so funny. Off everything on the board. Oh, man. I've seen people <laughs> doing greetings against me on Nether and then using the common 
conceding afterwards. The muster for battle is not a good play uh, with a wild pyromancer on the board. Is he gonna rope again? Oh my god, he's running out of time. Nah, he's gonna be fine. Okay, okay. Need to play some StarCraft too and get some APM. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get like uh, training cams for Hearthstone. <laughs> Click the green patron as fast as possible. Oh man. Mm. And this is like, Savish can't even kill the patron. This is well, so rare that you see that. <laughs> The life of a druid. That is so unfortunate. Yeah. It's like Keeper, <laughs> you, you, like you have to silence it basically. Oh and man, Belcher. Yeah, but um, How, usually what happens with the war song then? Well, what's really <laughs> bad the, about the keepers like if you deal with the patron, he's another patron coming. Yeah. And if yeah, you deal with the war song, the patron copies itself. And it's like, oh. yeah. On top of it, the, usually the war song is a bigger threat than the patron. Yeah. It's oh most yeah, of the time. I, I usually. Like I was talking with Cyan and like before you kill the patron you kill the Warsong. Because he can spawn like a bunch of patrons but he can't attack with them. But now he oh, can man. you see? He's like a second patron, you can just oh, do the execute draw. I I'm dying here for uh Savit as soon as he sees the second patron. And the execute's also exactly what enables the the reproduction of the dwarves, I guess. It's kind of uh What is very interesting is because like from the way how Eco played and everything he, he, Savish could figure out that he has no variant effects because he would have definitely used it last turn. Right. So he needed to top deck a variant effect. So probably like silence in the Boston Commander is slightly better, but it doesn't matter. Actually, it does matter. Was there any he, was there any room to play something very board centric like Sylvanas to force him into a complicated trade? I thought he had. Uh, I thought he was going to play Sylvanas. Honestly, but the problem is if there's uh, the patron, because you can't silence the patron at that point. So if he gets anything like an AoE, whatever it is, it can be anything really. Then you're oh man, be, uh, in the worst. Uh oh, he's, he's really running time. He should attack with the War Song now. Are, are we gonna see MC Tag? Nice, no, fine. Oh wow, MC Tag value. You actually get the minion with the charge copy. Oh, I wanna, he I wanna see. Steal frothing. I wanna see <laughs> swipe top deck with MC Tag. I don't even know if that'd be enough. Oh, he caught missed one attack, I think, right? With yeah. With the grip patron. Still, oh man, the the crazy thing is, Savish was um, ahead. Yeah, like and then a lot, and then all. suddenly, <laughs> no chance. Yeah, I mean, the sure trade in the swipe lets you kill nothing. Actually, you're still gonna take potentially lethal. I mean, you'd kill all the patrons and the frothing. You'd have two patrons yeah. in the war song. You'd be on like two effective health. Uh, MC tech with a patron doesn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. Actually, actually, if you innervate into wild growth, it gives you an extra card. I don't think that's how it works, unfortunately. I tried uh, it a while back, and it used to be like that. I'm not sure if they changed. I, I don't think it works because what happens is you're at six of nine mana, and then it just goes to ten mana. All oh, right, because you didn't do it on max mana. You're right. When you do uh -oh. it on nine, and then it gives you the wild growth. A little bit of BM here. And I think Savitz doesn't want to show Ecop that he has mind control tech. So I think he's keeping conquest in mind. <laughs> so it's like, rather than Are showing him mind control tech, then uh, I'll just end the game here. This deck is so stupid. Ecop didn't pick <laughs> up a single whirlwind effect that game. Not a single weapon. And and he had the and, and Savish had Innovate Emperor and he still lost. That, that's like yeah, it's um <laughs> But he drew like he drew the combo as pieces though, essentially. It's like one of those games where um where sometimes Druid doesn't really have much of their superpower stuff like Ancient of Lore, but they just happen to have both Force of Natures and both Savage Wars, and they just did like twenty-eight damage to you in two turns, you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you can't you can't even stop it. You're dead like, on You should have powered me yeah. twice, and then I died through like four cards that just happened to be in your hand, you know, that type of thing. Also, yeah. with that win, Eco prevented to be benched, which is yep. always like a little thing. Yeah, getting benched, people are discovering it's a really big deal. That's why I was even surprised Eco got sent out again, because yeah. I feel like teams were starting to randomize their early, their first three games based off of the probability, lowest probability of being benched. So, like Eco would go, and then Strifeco or Kalento would go, and whoever didn't play would would wrap up the first yeah. three games. Mm. Well, I mean, Another you kind of have to point. worry about that. Like the the benching is a really big deal in this format. 
Um, because if you really need that deck to come out, then like much later in the phase, I mean, of course, early on you've got uh, you know options with your decks, but once it narrows down to like two players uh, or three players with like one deck, it becomes a problem. Yeah. I agree. But this very interesting is usually people, like when they bring the it, they really save it as the last deck or second last deck. And Team Liquid decided to send it out very early. Because you have to get that win on the Druid at some point, right? So it's always interesting to see how people pick and... Yeah. yeah what I know kind of that strategy. Uh, RDU and Life Coach, basically the entire team Nihilum basically agrees for the most part that the picking order doesn't matter since you have to brute force your way through the win eventually. Yeah. Um, but some other people are a little bit more meticulous about it. And yeah. I think it starts mattering when you have tech cards, like Harrison Jones, Kazan Mystic, um, yeah. MC that's, Tech. That's when it matters. That, that is a very important point. On top of that some decks have bad and good matchups. Like, mm -hmm. you want to, like, force your opponent into a bad matchup if possible, or in a good... Or, like, bring yourself in a good position. I don't think it's, um, yeah, completely random... I mean, obviously, you try to. I mean, winning. You want to win in the end, right? So, just picking randomly. I don't know. Yeah, winning's nice. <laughs> yeah, winning is nice. Winning is nice. Better to win. You should try it sometime. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, shots fired. No, Gar. You know I love you. <laughs> you know, Rogue versus <laughs> Druid is coming up here. This is a matchup that a lot of people favor one or the other, um, and they're really split across the opinions. Are you in the camp of Rogue or in the camp of Druid here, Gar? I'm in the um, rogue camp. Like okay, those people convinced me. People like yeah. Firebat really convinced me that I mean it, that the rogue is favored at least in that matchup. Just because, yeah, backstep. I think backstep eviscerate is like the strongest card combination that a rogue has available. I mean, you innovate like in in the past. You used to like double innovate, get rid of the claw, and then they kill it for two mana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <and tempo. laughs> This is ridiculous. Like, Sap is so detrimental to Druid. Yeah, um, Sap as well. It's just crazy. It's crazy. And the thing is, now you run cards like Healbot as well, so it's easier to play around the combo. Like, in the past, you just went down to 14 life, and there was nothing you can do about it. You just dead. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that Rogue is slightly favored, for sure. But what about Harrison? How much does that change matchups against Rogue, specifically? Because Harrison, the more I see it against Rogue, the more I feel like... It's not actually as impactful as I think it would be because Rogue ends up going for like a same turn Blade Flurry, right? They right. Exactly. Their dagger and then they just Blade Flurry. That is 100% correct. The thing is that from all the weapon classes, it's by far the worst against Rogue. Because they will always use the entire dagger in the same turn. It's very rarely they don't. That's a oh. great play here by Savi, just straight up denying the dagger and forcing his opponent oh, to replay it. I mean, it it's sounds like, ridiculous, but it's so strong. Oh, actually, Tiddler did something similar in the, I think, in the finals of DreamHack, where he um, used it against uh, Master for Battle. Oh, yeah. just, oh my god, this is insane, yeah. Just to draw the cards. Yeah. But it's a very good play. Hmm. It's the most value you're going to get, because very often, and I think Amaz pointed that out at some point, he said uh, he looked at the weapon kind of like as a wild growth, because you set it up and it's going to stay there as two mana waiting to be used whenever you need it. So if you just delete it as fast as possible, even without the buff, I mean, sure, you're not denying the uh, the ultimate value, but you're still doing pretty well with it. Oh, wow. Oh, that, that is sick. That is really wow. unexpected, but I guess he really can't afford to take, you know, 15 damage. He's like, Savish, you think I can't kill your Harris? Oh <laughs> <laughs> Tit for tat. <laughs> but he's... Now, the, the thing is, one very strong thing is, like, if you... If you know Harrison is out of the picture, you can really save up your big dagger and use it whenever yeah. you want. You can Usually you have to play on Harrison. Yeah. This guy's so no, he can do whatever he wants that, that. Um, he went for the deadly poison here. And not the South Sea. I guess because what I was anticipating was that Bio Teacher can come out and then Deadly Poison would effectively do the same thing and you get a 1 1 with it. But I guess this way he plays around Swipe and the South Sea doesn't die for free. And he's saving it for the second oil. So it's like yep. most likely to play double oil. Fair enough, fair enough. Most people do. But now nope. he saw the swipe, right? Mm -hmm. So he's really considering it to just push for damage because he's out of, like, he has no more cards. <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing too, 
that um, what I like about the Harrison play is that Rogue can often run out of its own resources very easily by trying to get tempo. If you just have so much to bully it, then Rogue can't do much and has to rely on sprint. This dagger's gonna pay off, and four tech would have been too little to deal with the Lothab, and even though he can't play spells, he's still able to keep pushing. And Savit's without any removal? Um, yeah. It's kind of... Uh, it's kind of annoying, because it doesn't take that long for the rogue to stack up damage. Yeah, like if you can't deal with a violet teacher, that's usually a very, very bad sign. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing though, oh, well. a lot of tempo can be gained. Um, a lot of tempo is being generated through Kalenta. Like It might be the point where Druid has a lot of resources, but the, the sheer board just keeps snowballing for <laughs> for Kalento here. He's just going to get more 1-1s, one and until there's another swipe, uh, like he's going to continue to push through this. Yeah, that's uh, that's what Rogue does best. That's what I like about them, is they can be... They're kind of like aggro control, um, more so than a control, like, like a pure control deck. They will be able to go face much earlier than other decks would be able to. By the way, yeah, another, uh, another random fun fact. Yesterday, Kalento climbed to rank 1 Legend with Rogue. No, mm -hmm. you don't say. Yeah. That okay. was fun. Thank you, was Gar. It? Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed learning about that. Kalento hit no legend. I didn't watch it. I mean, so I yesterday. Known. Also, the sun, the sun also rise and waters. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's but, what I was going to say. You know, outside of those you know, big <laughs> yeah. anomalies, I think Kalento getting number one legend really shouldn't surprise people that much. Whoa. It was yesterday. Oh, wow. It's not like, come on. It was actually this morning. Yeah, I mean, I didn't didn't watch him, so I didn't know if it was fun. Uh, are we saying the fact was fun? If you were saying the fact was fun, then I I agree. Yeah, You're making fun of my fact. Fun fact? No, I I didn't. Uh, oh. I wasn't directed to the fact. It was directed hating the haters. Yeah, <laughs> Gar haters. <laughs> Damn. That eviscerate draw though, by the way. Yeah, like no. that. That was like exactly the scenario you were talking about, Gara. It's like that backstab was just made to get a lot more tempo and be able to push again on the board. Yeah, even though he has like a heavy card disadvantage, it doesn't matter. Like the Violet Teacher is like carrying, you can't remove it and just spawn so many 1-1s, he saw the swipe, it's just nothing yeah. a Druid can do. Druid is, like also in the Patreon game, as we saw, that's like where Druid is so weak right now. It wow. can't deal with a board, like but once Druid loses the board, it's like nothing he can do. It's like no card he has. Except poison yeah. seeds, noxious. Uh, you know. Lento just um, played around double combo with, with mm. Innervate. <laughs> Because he saw that his opponent had Thorson, so he's like, on the very off chance that, that he has die. like those exact four cards with Emperor Thorson in hand, I will heal myself from 22 to 25. Otherwise, he should have healed the Violet Teacher for, for mm -hmm. more board resilience. Yeah. And Colento does his turn so fast. Like, they were, for him, some, some turns are no brainers, so even when you have like three different options. I, I really enjoy playing, uh, seeing like Colento Rook. Wow. He plays it very fast. So he plays close. it much faster than everyone else, honestly. Like, I've seen a lot of experienced rogue players, and they will take a lot of time. But yeah. Kalento goes all in a lot more often than other players, I've noticed, with rogue. And it works out. Like, he steals wins um, very frequently with that approach. That's what rogue has to do. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the reality here. Like, rogue... Um, Rogue needs to be able to seize tempo when given the opportunity. And just look, like Kalento's hand early on seemed pretty decent, but Savit's Wait. warranted aggression. And I don't I don't think there's anything really Savit's can do here to Wait, stable. Did Sav by the way, did Savit play um, Druid now twice in a row? Yes, yep. and so. this would mean he's benched if he's dead. Oh, that feels bad, man. It feels extra bad because I think Kalento is also chilling in Korea. And he's just kind of like maybe in a hostel or in the airport yeah. or something. <laughs> you can't even play the you can't even play the extra mana that he gets what from Wild. Oh wait, never mind. You can get it because he's at nine. That's the pressure. <laughs> Dang. Well, for all that uh, pomp Dang, and circumstance son. that we gave to Team Liquid, they're down early, and Savitz is benched. Yikes. What was Savitz second class? Warlock. Warlock, I think. So, or was that? Yeah, that was it. That was Warlock. Uh, oh man, that's yeah, actually very important. I think they will go with the with the freeze mage now, right? Like, um, if you know for sure, Druid is like out of yeah. the picture. Yeah, has go. warrior. Yeah, I know, but it's patron, so it's not like oh my god, auto lose. Well, show could bring control, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I really liked what Shrifeko said yesterday. He said the strategy maybe isn't the what's best against the remaining. It's about what is really weak against the person that got benched. So what is really weak yeah, yeah. against Druid and Warlock? Freeze here? Mage. Freeze Mage is pretty much the only this it is, is like the, the only class, I think. It's uh, difficult to say what kind of warlock Savage plays. Probably it's Demon Zoo, it's like what you always tend to guess, but like even Fawson played Maligos Lock yesterday. So yeah. people will try to lock, I'd bring I would, game. Mm, yeah, maybe. Mm, Paladin? Yeah, I guess no, so. Paladin is good against both decks. Paladin is probably the best. Deck. Only if, um, but if it's Zoo though, is it really? I don't even know if Paladin's that good against. Oh, Zoo. Paladin is like the best deck against. That's like yeah, the only really good right matchup. Now. Oh wait, it's I, like I'm, the I'm only thinking good the matchup. aggressive Paladin. By the way, that's sorry. I was oh. think I didn't think it'd be mid range Paladin. I I have eliminated mid range Paladin from mine after Trump lost in <laughs> <It's> game. <laughs> <laughs> it's man. This is so discouraging when I watch those series. It's like you want this deck to work so bad, but at the same time you realize, yeah, you know, going into it, like kind of like Druid sometimes that. It might not work out. If, um, if Strifecore brings Agro Paladin, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah I'd, be, so. I'd be surprised. If Strifecore brings hope. it, I quit Hearthstone. Well, I'd be lost. <laughs> I but, lose all know. hope. Strifecore brings, like, Cancel Lock and Agro Paladin. Yeah. I'm gone. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, I, I like Freeze Mage now that you analyze it in this uh, capacity. And you reminded me that Midrange Paladin's a deck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's pretty good because you want to keep the ability for having like hunter against uh, if it's especially if it's a mid range slow hunter you can have it against druid and the warlock, and uh, like you said, paladin's best matchups are against the beats. And Strafko had an upset win with paladin last week against freeze mage. He won with his paladin mid range paladin against freeze mage, which is pretty nice. I think he that's like the one day I I know he lost with his own mage, but. His Paladin won, right? Without losing any, any games at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't I, know that I mean, I'd bring out any of like Strafford's decks. I, I said Colento plays Freeze Mage, but I don't know, right? It's just a guess. Yeah. It's like you see Mage, Colento, it should be Freeze yeah. Mage. I was gonna say, like, I, I think Strive Crow could bring out Handlock here. It's also not excessively weak against anything that on the other yeah. side, and it's also if uh, you know Patron Warrior tries to come out, then you've got something for it. Um. But now it's going to go up against Shows Hunter, so that's not exactly Strafko what you're like, looking for. Strafko has the coolest picture. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Chen Stormstout from Warcraft. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like the exact <laughs> thing. It's like Mr. Pandaria. <laughs> Pandaren Crow? There we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine that it might have some kind of expansion in the future, too, or some type, type of content, right? Oriented around Pandaria. Was there something released yet? Probably nothing, right? About the expansion, they always keep it so secret. Yeah, no, like, there, well, there is that uh, well met scroll that they're passing yeah, around. That's Did like, you get one, Noxious? I didn't get one. I, I got the uh, the GVG invention stuff. Oh, cool, wow. cool, cool. That's cool. That's sweet. Yeah, I got the scroll. I felt really left out of the GVG invention thing, but uh, it Not feels no good longer. to be on the inside for once. Did you analyze the scroll? Did you pick something I up? Did, some I did, I did. I actually tried to find what the scroll was made of through some scientific you know, experiments. Got my little beakers. Detective Froden. <laughs> to trace Coming the materials. Soon. Well, you should I distill it. And enhance. Able, uh, like if you know the you know the content of liquid and what it's made of, you can probably figure out where it comes from. And then you can probably reconstruct what was around it and possibly know what was on the screen um, near you know where it was created. So maybe you'll get the cards before everyone else does. All right. Well, we seem to go with Warlock here from Strife Crow up against the Hunter from Show. I uh, don't know if that's exactly what Cloud9 wanted, given that, again, Savitz is benched, which means he can't come back until another member from Liquid wins, whether Show or Nyria. So this this is a really important thing, because if Show loses, Savitz is still benched. Or no, 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 never mind. Just kidding. They, they reminded me yesterday. So if Show loses, actually Savitz can play again. Yeah, he's unbenched. Uh, Show though with the hybrid hunter here with the wolf yeah, riders. It's a very cool version that Show plays. It plays also like the um, the tigers. Whoa, melee lock! It's not hand lock. We lied, man. You never know, man. You never know. The dragon lock. This is. Whoa. Yeah, I really like dragon warlock nowadays or melee ghost warlock, melee lock. Um, I think. It definitely uh, has its weak points. For example, you can draw really awkwardly. If he never gets a dragon, this Blackwing Corruptor is just a worse 
lost tall strider beast. And um, <laughs> if you if you end up drawing too many situational cards, you also have just really no board impact. Um, but that's like the nature of any combo deck, right? The reason why I love it though is it synergizes so well once again with the Warlock hero power. And there's a lot of cool opportunities to get really good synergy. Um, even just with like how Twilight Drake interacts with everything else too. I, yeah. I really like this deck a lot. Uh, but the f- biggest weakness of it is Hunter. It's like what I heard. It's like by far the weakest matchup. So yeah. it's like very good if like Liquid expected them to go Warlock. It's like, mm-hmm. Well, I really loved playing around with the uh, Mali Lock where you actually play Demon Wraths if you don't expect that many Warlocks. It's like the one circumstance. Like I played Blood Mage Thanos with Demon Wraths and the Coils. Mm-hmm. So it's, it gave you like a, a bit more flexibility for removal against Hunter, uh, Hunter boards. See, here's the, here's the awkward thing. It's like, mm-hmm. well, do I play a Twilight Drake and give up my Blackwing Corruptor synergy? Or do I just like forego the, a weaker play on the board here? So many possibilities. Both of, that's like kind of the awkward thing about this deck sometimes. Yeah, I feel like the you have is, to go for the Drake though, no? Another, yeah, yeah. The, another thing is, right now, Shu doesn't really know for sure it's Dragon Lock, right? True, true. He saw a Zombie Chow, it can still be Hand Lock, a Twilight Drake. At this point, Does that you don't stop know. You though? Does that truly stop? Gar, search. <sighs> Deepest part of your heart. <laughs> that actually Does a hunter get stopped? Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the only thing is, like, if you play around Molten Giants, that's the, the only thing, and that's what he's thinking right now. So Shadow like, Flame is probably what. Maybe Shadow Flame is a bit of a worry, a little bit too. Like, if you don't kill has, that Drake, there's that. Okay, right. If he's, uh, if you know for so sure this is Malloc, there's no way he, like, he would consider to play around Molten Giants. Right. But he has, because he has another bow, right, as well. Mm. But all he saw right now was a zombie chow, um, a twilight drake. Was it a coil as well? No, mm-hmm. not even a coil. He's seen basically nothing at yeah. this point. He knows and and Strafkur is really famous for handlock. Like he, he's show. one of the best handlock players. <laughs> he's like, oh, please be Molly Luck. Because putting him on six life is the worst life to put. Uh, yeah, a you don't want to put him. Well, I mean, you don't want to put him too low. Is the problem if you think he's playing? He's handlock. playing on Molten Giants. He's clearing the board. If he would just go face, he would just win the game next turn. Kind of playing around two things, and his hand has been very slow so far, so you have to assume there's something. Uh, yeah. And he doesn't know yet. Like, yeah. Sludge Belcher, if he plays Sludge Belcher, it doesn't say anything either. Yeah, uh, it feels like Sludge Belcher gets easily bullied, yeah. though, because of the, the trades with the Honey Creeper and the, the Leopard Gnome here. You're just saying, like, um, if you can avoid playing the Corruptor, just to give him, not to give him the information, you know, he might That's just true. Play, keep playing around Bolton yeah. Giants, which is. Show will be like, hey guys, it's Handlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, if he plays Instead cards like Telegraph, Evot, yeah. Belters, like, yeah, good Wolf job, show. Sure. And then Shrivecourt just whips up Mally goes later on. So like, what? <laughs> What happened there? So far, so far, a dark bomb. Well played. <laughs> that that's what makes it so annoying too, and why I was even more floored that uh, Value Town didn't end up bringing Warlock. And it's just a little unfair to peg that as their only, you know, error or something. There's probably a lot of other things too, but Warlock has pretty much every type of archetype, short of fatigue, that's viable in Conquest. I think, and it's like there's just so many things that's versatile with this class in general. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Even like when you just think about yeah. Malilok, there's like ten different Malilok versions. It's, mm-hmm. it's insane. Ten? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's like people play molten giants, one molten giant, all sorts of things. They cu- cut the corruptors. Like like Noxious says, you play Talos. Like <laughs> even just a few cards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's when like you play a dragon. Gi- what? <laughs> they cut the Maligos and they put. No, no. <laughs> you play Maligos <laughs> without the uh, dragon synergy. Bro, Dan. <laughs> oh, you're yeah, being yeah, yeah. facetious. No, I just I haven't it's I good. haven't seen people really cut a lot of those cards. I guess no, they, 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 they experimented they, with a lot. Really. Like the people who came to like top five legends and stuff, they they play really weird decks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I mean, you would know. I never get that far. <laughs> because just, it catches you off like guard. Me. Just having, like, random Molten Giants in Malilok, because nobody plays around it, right? And people know that, so... Yeah. I mean, that's what ladder is, being one step ahead of people and just, like, confusing them. That's why I mean, whenever someone that's... posts a list, it's, like, the most weird stuff ever. And it's like, yeah, you got number one because no one knows what the heck you're doing. You don't even know what the heck you're doing sometimes. It's like you're playing yeah. random tech cards and it just happens to work. Yeah, I so played this Mana he- Wraith Shaman. It kind of worked out because, you know, yeah. I have a hero power that spawns minions. 
he went for the hero power. He manned up. So, well, Mikael with the coil? Is that everything with everything Farseer? Again, if he drew a dragon, I think he would have been in an okay-ish spot. Blackwing Corruptor and, Iron, uh, and the Mortal Coil, but... This deck definitely has its moments where it's uh, it's it's less than perfect. <clears throat> See if you can draw something else here to help. Him. See now, implosion's also awkward against Hunter Two for another reason. The Unleashed the Hounds. Do you want us to do maximum damage sometimes? I think it's like if I have to kill this exactly, I want it to be two. And I think that's the only instance where you want implosion to be less than that outside of like frothing berserker combinations. And patrons. And this Leoc is actually surprisingly effective here. It's like, you don't, it's not a big oh, enough threat on its own to justify really going all in on killing, but it's also giving the hunter a little bit more reach with those, uh, those minions. He's been spawning quite a few of them. Wow, nice juggle. Was that like a perfect outcome? Uh, mm, I think he'd prefer to, uh, actually, yeah, I think that'd be better because that way he doesn't have to lose a dog on the board. Mm -hmm. So anything that Gates puts out, I think he's also gotten to the point where he can deduce that his opponent doesn't have any like big threat like Molten Giants. And I think if I'm Strifeco and I know that I'm probably going to lose, uh, I'd opt instead to forego that. But another thing, thing that is nice is that he can, s well, kind of stabilize on the board if he implosions and soul fires, but he dies to just the damage burn that's following up here. I feel but yeah, soul fire is not too bad, right? I mean, it, gives, it puts you on 16 that you remove Leoc. I mean, you're losing soul fire, which is a big deal, but if you manage to stabilize after that point, like on turn 8, implosion and defender is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. So... I feel like that's... I wonder. Yeah, it actually might be the only play then. Yeah, this is really... He has to lose a Corruptor. <laughs> Basically, Soulfire needs to get rid of the Corruptor and it's going to be golden. I don't know this if that's like the winning for. play. Yeah, I don't know if that's the winning play either, like going for Healbot and Soulfire. It feels like a survival play. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's convenient. And he actually rolled a 2, so minimizing the amount of... Uh, well, does, it doesn't matter here, but it could have mattered. Ripping pepperonis. Yeah, ripping the pepperones. So, Sho has the damage to kill him. He has 10 damage, so it's like... I think he was just, uh, maybe he had like some camera issue because it seems like it's frozen. Yeah. Sometimes you look, kind of just tell vision a bit. Like, alright, what if I trade those imps? Oh wait, lethal. He's like mm. enjoying the moment. He's like... <laughs> Living no. in the moment, but that's gonna revive some beats though, that Hunter versus Warlock match. Yeah, well done. It's tied 2-2 now. Um, Liquid gets back onto the board. And that's a win each for Sho and Nyria. And Strife Crow, it was his first appearance, ends up dropping here. Now, Savitz, like you said, can come back um, anytime now that it's been unlocked. He's been unbenched. But is it the time to bring him out, considering that some of the classes available are still pretty strong? Um, but the important thing is, like you said, if Clento is bringing Freeze Mage, the fact that Savitz is also still relevant with that druid is important. Yeah, mm. it's like the one deck that I think really could punish that. I mean, it's uh, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to be running up against. Oh, then again, Headlock is also not that bad of a matchup. Um, actually, wait, question: Does Show even know it's Mali Lock? Soulfire. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah, the Soulfire yeah, and the Black Corruptor. Wing Corruptor. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's got um, the Corruptor, so it's hundred percent. Druid is good against that, right? Yeah, so you could play you could play Druid here and you know run run into Freeze Mage or Handlock. I mean Mali Lock and you'd be okay ish. It's just that the other fifty percent are not what you want to face. This really looks like they're trying to get that win on the Druid, the way how they played it, right? <laughs> yeah. Keep sending the Druid out. <laughs> like you'll die. Okay, you as well. It's like the mid range paladin syndrome. <laughs> He's well, unmatched. Let's 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 send out the druid again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, could try. get that win. I think t there's like different levels of, uh, you know, getting wrecked. There's like the, oh, I lost a lot of games, but whatever. And then there's like, I lost a lot of games with this one deck. Yeah. Like I lost 0 6 with like Druid, for example. And then you're just like, wow. And you have this like thing where you just never want to play it ever again because you just, it's like that's, it just gets completely cornered and you couldn't beat their entire lineup with it. Yeah. So it's I, I think before, it's. It's before though. It's just one of the very super disheartening, right? When. 
you get that one deck that you, like it's a pretty average deck so you would expect mm -hmm. average results at worst like the worst case scenario you're gonna pilot it you know 50 percent. you're like all right it's, it's all right but when you just lose straight up four or five games with it that's just disheartening i experienced such yeah. a thing the hunter gara ago. hunter yeah you might yeah. you might think man just just one game come on yeah all fair right, enough dude. fair enough one game come on no I right. think uh, I'm comfortable with. I think I'm comfortable with almost anything here. I think all four classes you can make a case of like a bunch of mind games for. So pretty much whatever they feel like is the best for their strategy. So if Cloud9 doesn't want to bench Drifeco or get Drifeco bench at I all, I like Rogue a lot. Then like uh, I would. Yeah, 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 I was just saying from Cloud9, I think sending Clan to Recop here is perfectly fine too. There's like really yeah. not that many bad matchups for this Hunter. I feel. Assuming that's Patron Warrior. That's kind of the strength of the best of 11, too. Like, with six decks, you're bound to be covering a lot of your dead angles. It comes down to those last few decks, really, where um, you will definitely notice. Like, if you do a best of five, send Conquest between two players, you'll be realizing who has the edge matchup wise. And that's kind of where it starts being relevant, like in the best of 11. When there's like three decks left on each side, then you look at the lineups and it starts to make a bit more sense. Yeah, it's I'm, difficult I'm, for me like uh, to rate Malilok actually. Like what are the really good matchups? It's so such a weird deck to rate. It's like really, how good is it against really, Rogue? really good against Handlock. Mm -hmm. that's, for example, that, that's if Maria goes Rogue against it, like how good is it? It it can be really good, but is it like super favorite? Uh no, I actually don't like Malilok too much against Rogue. I haven't liked it, but I think it comes down to when you get the defender and if the rogue just whiffs on AoE. Like you really need to get proper timing on those. Very often, I haven't found uh, found it necessarily very convincing. It's good against priest, right? <laughs> What's not good against priest? Oh wait, um, yeah, it's uh, good so against very oh, very oh, slow. Oh snap! <laughs> wow, Nox is jumping on the guard Hatrian. Welcome aboard. Yeah, that okay, was fun. Ecop versus Show. Okay, the Hunter here is what we thought would come out from Cloud9, but the Warrior was uh, potentially Liquid just being a step ahead. I feel like maybe that's the case here because Liquid feels like they conveniently yeah. got the right side of the matchups against Strife Crow, and sending the Warrior out here from Show is also it's pretty, pretty good. good. Yep. Yeah. If this is a face hunter, that is. I mean, I think out of all the decks that are there, maybe Rogue has the best chance against Midrange Hunter and Warrior has the best chance against Face Hunter. Yeah, that seems to make uh, makes sense. I mean, it's in line with what pretty much everybody agrees on, I think, at this point. It also depends on how you build the patron, right? If you have the slow version with shield blocks. Oh, uh, yeah. That could actually yeah. help. Like, the Ghouls is pretty much... It's become more standard. Like, for a while, a lot of people were debating over them, but you see them a lot more it's, now. It's so, this is, for me, the funniest thing. Uh, how that uh, cycles out. First, everyone cut the, the inner rages, and then everyone said like, "Oh yeah, inner rage is the best card. How can you, how can you cut that card?" And then everyone cut Grumash, and then people were like, "Are you stupid? How can you cut Grumash? It's Ten damage for, for eight mana." <laughs> and then it comes back into the deck, and that same happened for ghouls, right? At some point, everyone cut ghouls. Yeah, like, they're like oh, I already have such a bad with. card. <laughs> and yeah, then it came yeah. back. Now it's like staple. Oh my god, how can you cut ghouls? Yeah. Like, well, why, why would pirates? I not want whirlwinds in my deck? <laughs> like, I want six whirlwinds. In the, yeah, so. It's so fucking funny. By the way, I got a question. Do you think uh, Strife Girl was running an Acidic Swamp Ooze in that uh, Mally Log deck? Oh, I, I haven't, we haven't seen it, but it's very likely. Yeah. In all types of Warlock, like even if it's Demon, Zoo, or Handlock, everyone likes to run one Ooze now because you kind of have that one flexible spot. And it seems to, yeah, the card to go right now. Big question is, will one day anybody make a legitimate pirate deck and then run the Blood Sail Corsair for Weapon Hate? If any, anyone is going you know, to do it, it, it will be Xixo. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Xixo could probably pull it off. Like yeah. He's done pirate more than most people I've ever seen. Yeah. Makes sense. Alright, well, the Hunter off to a very slow start. <clears throat> um... Uh, that's because it is the mid range. We saw that hunter's mark, right, and the high main here. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it'll definitely be a slower mid range approach. And against the patron, um, generally speaking, the mid range hunter has been getting an edge recently. Uh, but that usually requires you to curve out very nicely. Like 
you hit the strong animal companion, they can't answer it. You hit Houndmaster, you hit like low theb into high mains. Like then you just completely overwhelm them. Um, in this scenario though, it's definitely gotten a little bit rockier considering that Warrior uh, has been able to stabilize early game and he still hasn't even had their weapons yet. Yeah, but that's a really good follow-up though from the Hunter player. Like this is, Ecops is going to be able to silence off the Acolyte. Denying the draw here I think is really clutch. Yeah, yeah for sure. Wonder how much of a, if, again, a factor cards like Harrison will be here because um, it's another one of those things where I we saw it yesterday and we've seen it in previous tournaments very recently. Where it's like you have Harrison, which is great against Hunter, but then do they ever really draw weapons, or is there a scenario where you can really drop Harrison and get value outside of just being a 5 4? Oh, wow. Track. That is not going to pay off at all. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, uh, you never know, right? But she really now, wants to get the battle rage value, but right now it seems very difficult. That's horrendous, actually. And if he plays the weapon because it feels like the only safe-ish play, then it just gets hard countered right away. Yeah. Oh man. Would you want like okay? Is he attacking with the death bite next turn, no matter what? Because if no. he is, not necessarily. Can, but if he isn't, you can use something like Animal Companion to bait it out, and then drop the high main the following. Because this is a high priority elimination now. It's like you can't take six damage extra per turn. And eight. and for the and for the hunter, you really want to force him to use the despite before he draws the patrons. Yep. So he yep. doesn't have that. So like even if you sacrifice a minion like animal companion, mm -hmm. it's still worth it. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Wait. He's gonna battle rage. Battle rage for two cards right here. Get himself a bit of cycling. Oh. Two slams. Wow, super cycle heavy. I've been seeing like I've been seeing the one slam. Is two slams common as well now, Garner? Um, <laughs> that's the, also another thing. First, everyone caught it, and then everyone started to play one slam. Um, yeah. I I personally don't like two slams, but a lot of very good patron players uh, play two slams. Yeah, like it all comes down to your play style. Life coach plays two slams. I think that Shio plays two slams. Maybe Salai as well. Yeah, he also plays two slams. Which oh, is yeah. interesting. The cut feels so clunky sometimes. Jaime's gonna hit the face this turn. And um, that's a lot of follow-up pressure with Lotheb to shut down spells. I'm sensing that this is like um, a, a three-step push here from Ecop. The first is just set up with damage, the second is to press for the win, and third is just to laugh at your opponent while thanking him. Ladder style. Yep, <laughs> ladder style. Oh. oh, I hate this. There would be like statistic, like which class BM'd the most in game. I'd, would be I'd say Mage, sure. man. Yeah, no, like which I, class do you think me, says man. thank you the most? It has to be Hunter. <laughs> really? Like, really? I don't, which I don't class have that experience. The most? It has to be Paladin, right? It's like those are, it's statistically true. Like there's no <laughs> way. It's just, yeah. Well, man. Smell what? These are the facts of Hearthstone. I don't know, man. Like, may just seem to me to be like I, I guess Hunter says greetings, Straddler, the most when they get double Lepernome opener. Like that is a hundred percent greetings, Traveler statistic. Yeah, but see, that's situational. Mm -hmm. Like, there's situations where you use greetings, but there's also situations where you use thanks and sorry. But for Paladin, every situation is okay to say well met. Yeah. Right? There's no wrong time to use your greetings as a Paladin. Player. It's true. Is there? Can right. you name me one? <laughs> you see, you can. Yeah. You can yeah, die can. and say well met on the way out. <laughs> see? Okay, well, <laughs> e, e Cop's having an identity crisis. He doesn't know what he has to use here. Wait, but no, it's like um, it's like a bait. E Cop is the hunter, but it actually looked like E Cop was thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, this is going to continue to put on a ton of pressure here. The way that um, the way that uh, the warrior can win from here is to stabilize onto the board, but he doesn't even have like the Grim Page and Warsong Commander combination here. Yeah, he's going to have to look for more AOE again. Oh, well, that's that's kind of helpful. In a way. Yeah, no, it's definitely helpful. Um, and the, with Armor Smith to follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this might actually be the turn where he starts to stabilize very, very well. 
This is also like the life pool where, like around where patron stabilizes, around 10, 12. Yeah. It's about average for them, right? Yeah. They're using and you get the armor spiff out, and at that point, the hunter is like out of removals for it, and then you start getting insane amount of health back. Yeah, and then it's like there's one of these weird things where even if you roll huffer, you still want to hit the face, but that armor smith is like yeah. staring at you with a nice juicy target on its back, and you're just like, mm. yeah. If you, look, I, I think I like her a little better. It's much yeah, worse against sure. patron than against a control warrior to let armor smith live because oh, they get yeah. much more armor. Yeah, against control warrior, it's like you're worried about. Um, sludge belchers and maybe a death spike. <laughs> yeah, sludge belcher is like, oh man, damn, why did I not kill that one? <laughs> yeah, it's like four hits that you have to do separately. But that's the only scenario in this case. It's yeah. so awkward. It's like full health back again. How do you deal with the low step though? Dude, that feels so awkward. It's like no, uh, no here part that turn. Oh wow, never mind. War Song Commander. Uh, that'll do it on oh, nine mana. Game. Yeah. Hell, it's about time. Yeah, let's heal, let's heal a little bit of life here. Does he want to? I guess he can also drop um, the frothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Just That's collects the damage on so. it. Yeah. It's still a little tight squeeze, though. He, I think. He might trade it away. I don't know. Do you dislike that? Oh. I mean, how does he handle your war song? And then past this point, you're pretty much going to autopilot to victory if this board stays this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. <laughs> it's it's too tough. Oh, wow. Oh, well, never I, mind. Dream. <laughs> Are you ready, Gara? Are you ready? Oh, no. Oh. Dream died with Misha. Everyone is still waiting for the double uh, quick shot dream. No, it happened one it time. It happened, man. I think Shocky pulled it off. It was was like, that shocky or it, it happened one time, that's about it. Yeah. Everyone is trying to figure out, oh there's still a way to get lethal. You just quick shot into quick shot into a cane golem. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You got it. One day it's gonna happen. Yeah. In turn to you. To you right? It's gonna happen to you, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get punished by that for not believing yeah. it. Yeah. That's how it works every single time. The more someone hates on a certain scenario or a card, it just like ironically seems to mess them up the most. Yeah. Sneeze old Shredder Nazdormu. Welcome, life coach. Yeah. I wonder how many thighs how many times Thighs had to disbelieve the uh Sneeze Old Shredder Kelthazad for that to happen though. Huh. I don't even know. By the way, there's an yeah. inner page and a grim patron and a war song already sitting there, nice and pretty. Yeah. Um, and Not this... sure about pretty, but yeah, I mean. Oh come on! War song commander is beautiful in its own way. Playing against patron really feels like playing against You're, the old miracle. No. Yeah. It's very strong, burly. Just with know. a gazillion lives. <laughs> I think it's like the worst thing because initially a patron wasn't as refined as it is now and it used to feel like you were playing freeze mage when you played it like you had this long term combo thing that you tried to set up and you drew a lot like freeze mage Whoa. Then, uh, <laughs> and then this happens <laughs> alright <laughs> I don't even uh, know what to say 10, here everyone, to 14, the power 22 17 damage he doesn't care if it's lethal he's like hero sir wow like that. an e cop is somewhat crushed, man. Yeah, it's like, uh, greetings, sir. I just, uh, I just arrived. Everybody got in here. How are you feeling? I don't think there's a combination of draws that can really pull him out, too, because Houndmaster was supposed to maybe taunt a minion, but his opponent had a board that got way out of control. So Show takes two games in a row for Liquid, and yeah. Ecop, uh, Drops his game here. And Show's still undefeated is what it means, right? I don't think he lost. He's done, right? Yeah, he's, yep, he's done, done. And that, that means he's like 2-0 again. So another, another undefeated player to the uh, Arkham Team League at this point. Wow. Yeah, well done for Liquid. Um, they're also back into the lead here, giving Savit some breathing room. The Hunter is still around, though. And I think that was still the worst possible matchup based off what we're looking here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Actually, Rogue still can be problematic too. Never mind. So I guess we're back to the drawing board. Pick whatever you feel like is good. 
to your strategy. I feel like it, it will come win. down to the Druid again, right? Yeah. To get a win on that. They tried. Oh, that six of deck. You know, this is the excruciating part. You cut one deck from this and you're looking at a lineup that's just strong all around. And then you have to, if you have to smash a sixth deck into the lineup, then everything starts kind of looking flimsy. Like, you wish you could duplicate that Warlock. I would still be um, feeling confident with Savish on the Druid, though. I mean, yeah, he... as a pilot, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you... So, mm. Do you think anybody could bring Priest and do well? Like, do very well. I mean, <laughs> like, it's really complicated because... I, I know that you're not trying to be mean to Gar, but it's just really funny that you're asking him directly. Um... That's right. Well, he played. He played priest. Uh, Can't anybody just yesterday it? though? It's only well, like. Is there anyone? <laughs> anti <-SC. laughs> Anyone? Maybe just one. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you brought guy. it and you you played it a long time ago. It's like one of the classes I see play like quite frequently that other players just don't bring. Um, okay, but it just doesn't feel today, super so. consistent either way, right? Yeah. I guess Kalento is like the only other player alongside you. Um, well, Kalento the also brought it bit. yesterday and won. So and we're not talking about how bad Priest is in that context. Dog yeah. actually won the first game he brought Priest, and I think he won a really tough matchup. I feel like he beat yeah. Ro, um, or maybe he beat Druin. Yeah, we, like we always like we both played it in HTC, and we have mm -hmm. lost with it, and we had bad matchups all the time, like against Handlock, against Rogue. Uh, yeah, if you get a good right. card draw, I guess you can Adrian. always uh, do somewhat well. That's why you gotta put mind blasts in your deck, man. What's the ad what's the adaptation you have to make to really compete in the like against those guys, like against um, patron metagame? Let's say because very often I think you just get comboed down at unfortunate yeah, times. Yeah, but if they don't draw emperor, it's one card you have to draw, right? Right. And yeah. the thing is, with cabal, you will always steal something good. If you steal an armor smith and you fought steal an armor smith, you already have two armor smiths, and then <laughs> like doing sixty damage, you need to draw your entire deck, and that's right. like everyone jokes about it's so easy, right? But drawing your entire deck, you have to get to that point, and you only run two executes. You can't execute a Valens chosen target and then execute a cabal. It's like those those minions, like Harrison, Loa Tab. You can't execute everything. So it's and like then, mid range minions that just tempo yeah, you down exactly. eventually, kind of like that's, Druid when they get the curve. That's why Quartermaster, for example, is very good against Patron. You can't kill all that stuff. You don't run Brawl. Like, you, you need yeah. to survive till you can play your stuff. And, and Priest has very Sounds good bot enough. removals for Patrons with Light Bomb, the Circle Auch and I. It's probably like the best class for, with a lot of removals for Patrons. All right, well, hopefully we get to see a bit more of that in the next uh, few weeks of Archon. I mean, I'd love to see more priests. It's one of the classes that I think deserves a bit more representation. But then Actually, again, I guess has, you have to adapt to your players a bit more. I guess, and, and it has like a lot of decent matchups. Like with Druid, you feel like, oh man, that's a bad matchup, that's a bad matchup, that's a bad matchup. But with Priest, it's like you like to play against any type of Hunter. You always yeah. feel, like from mm -hmm. the back in the days, you always feel like Priest was the counter to Hunter. Yeah. Like Midrange yeah. Hunter is still very good for Priest. Like Priest can handle Midrange Hunter really well, and most people tend to bring that, not Agro. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, Patron is fine. And, like, Zoo is fine. You know, those Agro decks. Priest has, like... Still great against Midrange Shaman. Yeah. No, it's yeah. still... Uh, <laughs> cool chooses to bring it. It can happen. Yeah. It might. I mean, uh... It's one of those also, things. um... Hashtag Silence Dome. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Priest is also pretty decent, from my opinion, dealing with um, some of the tempo mage stuff too, but um, I don't know the actual <laughs> statistics of it because people don't really play much tempo mage anymore. The least played matchup, I think the le <laughs> the only other least played or less played matchup would have to be like echo mage versus priest. Imagine how frustrating it would be if priest you bring is shaman. Terrible against echo mage, man. If you bring standard uh, shaman, it's like well, I you... shadow word death, and he duplicated his his moon Moon giant. It's like oh god, yeah, headlock all over again. Um, all right, well, here we go. Klanto versus Savitz. Mage versus the Druid. That is the one matchup. That was actually the one matchup that they wanted to avoid. Yeah. Like, Freeze Mage against anything else would have been okay. And Savitz here. And I think that, uh, on the other hand, Liquid really tried to get that matchup. That's why they're sending out the Druid so often. Like, you really want to, uh, to face the Freeze Mage with your Druid because that, that, like, that is one of those matchups the Druid is really favored. Mm. Oh, see yeah, if you can pick true. up a hand, it's, uh, it's gonna help that. Because very often, even though you might be favored, you still have to play the tempo, like, very fast. Yep. Um, push them out. This is not quite the minion heavy hand that Druid wants to see. 
Um, yeah. No, no, wild growth definitely stinks. Uh, but he still has a couple of interesting cards here. My control deck will be dead, so you might as well just drop it. I think Druid's chances improve um, in this matchup based off of a few things. Like, he has good draws, and Druid's got mediocre draws. Um, the second thing is that Klento has the coin, so he can convert that into more damage, because that's part of the thing, too, is like, now that he has Alex Straza and Antonis in hand, he can start pressuring if he can find a way to uh, go for a win here. So, I think there's a couple of fa uh, factors in Kalento's favor here. You can definitely take it. It's not it's not a 100% to zero match. Yeah, yeah. Here. And this wouldn't be the first time in ATLC in recent memory that we saw Druid beat a Freeze Mage. Or Freeze Mage beat the Druid, excuse me, the other way around. Yeah, I think even matchups are like 70%, you still can't expect them to go down to, like, as planned systematically. Mm -hmm. Like, there are some matchups, like Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior, you kind of feel like you're sitting through a Slugfest, but... This is not one of them, really. Huh. Second keeper! But yeah. For the Doomsayer. Well... Usually, pretty... like, you save the keepers for the Doomsayers. You can never, ever lose your board as mm -hmm. a Druid. Like, it's very crucial. Yeah, but you still have to have a board, which I think why is why yeah. he ended up playing the first one. Uh, what he did. But now, like, right now you guarantee, you almost guarantee a board clear with the second Doomsayer. If you um, end up Druid. I mean, Emperor, Archmage, yeah. Alex, Icelands, Frostbolt, Fireball. That's that's pretty that's good, awesome. right? He's gonna unnerf everything. Yeah. Oh wow. No. Never. Blizzard, please. Also, what's really unfortunate about Savita's hand is that he'd prefer to use things like Ancient of Lore to maybe heal as the time goes on, but because his hand's so situational and and awkward, that he has to use it to draw here. Just the combo, like you oh. really want the Valkyrie as well, right? Just to to get the combo out pressure before the Alexstrasza. Yeah, that's and generally to draw cool. Lord Tap as well, obviously. It's this like is a nice card. Pop, actually, I think that this would be is, huge. Um, oh man, pop, pop in an ice block this early is then insane. the Thorsen stays alive. I think. Mm, does it matter? You have to swipe. <clears throat> you have to force. No, no, you have to use swipe here in order to pop the ice. Oh, yeah. 6, 8. 13. Yeah, you have to... Um... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, You can uh, put him down to 1, though. That's a nice thing. Um, But you don't lose your board. And you can still... Yeah, what can you do for 7 mana? I think it's worth it, though. I think so too, considering I that think you have Force of yeah. Nature for the hand to, to burn. Yeah, to, to go for it again. But if the, the thing is, he doesn't know if it's. Does he know his Ice Block? Yeah, 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 he knows, knows, right? Yeah, he's already attacked into it to see if it was Ice Bear. So, like, he's fully aware that it's guy, is he's going to be able to force his opponent to replay a secret yeah. if he's got it. And Alex uh, Trust is 8 mana, so he knows mm -hmm. that as well. Even with the Emperor play, it's still, uh, still mana left. Also, like. Because at this point he has to use defensive Alexstrasza, so he doesn't need to save the law for heal. Oh, as well. Uh, so what's he do here? He has to. Ice. That's like the one card that could have helped him if Savage doesn't pick up any like direct damage. No, that, that was that was such a huge draw. He knows yeah. his opponent uses swipe and two keepers. That's yeah. I think the only other way you can do direct damage without using the ice barrier is the the second swipe. Unless I'm missing something. Mm. Unless a Ragnaros comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and, and, wow, Baron Geddon. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and at some point you will be able to do some crazy Alex Strasser plus Blizzard turns. If this keeps going here. Yeah. No, he's very oh, close yeah. to getting craziness happening. Like it's just a matter of living. And he has Antonidas as well. Like yeah. some really he crazy might, stuff. He might not need it though. He has to Nova here or he's yeah, dead. Five damage might add up. Like from Emperor alone, that might just be enough to start punching for a Oh yeah, damage. that's that's a big deal as well. Oh, okay. What is he doing? He's just he's removing the board. Oh, is he playing around another silence on a minion? What are the odds? Wailing Soul Druid is gone. Like, it, it lives oh. for all of a week. That's interesting. Even then. Oh, wow, alright. It's just so weird to see that from the Freeze Mage, right? Playing like this. Yeah, title. normally you just, like, he pushes. 
<laughs> but he was he was going on the off chance his opponent had like an iron beak owl or something. Yeah, that was weird, right? Like I feel like if he went for face, I kind of criticized his uh, freeze major dreamhack Bucharest because he's uh, in those situations because like he will. Like the way to win as a freeze mage is to burst down your opponent, and how it looks like he has to play Alex Strauss defensively, right? Or he's right. just yeah. dead. So you need the damage. You will just run out of cards. Like he just used both ice lances without Antonidas. He will just run out of damage. Yeah, I, that's like, what I was thinking able... too. But we'll see what his like what his longer game plan is. Because I, I really feel the way you do. Right. Yeah. So. The funny thing is about Alex Strauss. It's like. He doesn't have a BGH, he can't kill it. Yeah, Alex can make up some of that damage too. And there is... There's like Antonitis, Frostbolt, Blizzard next to... Oh, I guess he's going to use Frostbolt now. It's tough to make sure it preserves some health. You have to Frostbolt first. Easy oh, man. Oh, oh, wow. Could this have been That huge? can get it out of hand. Oh, well, he doesn't have 10 mana. If he had yeah. 10 mana, that mana uh, Wraith could have gotten super big. Or whatever it's called, Mana yeah. Addict. I'm surprised Kalento killed the matter uh, the ma the shredder after he played Alex. Yeah, he's doing s small misplays. Yeah, but it's really it's kind of like putting the shredder in the middle, right? Like RDU brings it up, and then you realize it's gonna be something you just harp yeah. on forever. But, no one was doing it yesterday. Yeah. Everyone was putting shredder on the outside. Does he cycles? I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, you can't really kill it anyways. Mm -hmm. But check this out, Antonitis Blizzard. Easy. I'm pretty Easiest. sure that's game. Yeah, Easiest right? Antonitis <laughs> Blizzard of his life. Pretty sure that's game because Alex Strauss is going to hit for 16, and then you have the 17 or 18, excuse me, from Antonitis. No, wait, no. You can put two. You can play three fireballs next turn. It's like, where, where, what? where is your, where's your keeper now? <laughs> oh my god. It's frozen. And this game got really wonky thanks to Emperor Thorson. I mean, is there anything like I guess a cycle BGH? Yeah, BGH. Like, BGH off this, you kill the Alex and you taunt up behind the Weird. Druid, but otherwise you just have to attack on it. But you know he's got at least one fireball. I mean, you don't know the rest, was, right? But. Yeah, this is. But it, he let Alex Straza hit twice. It's yeah. like it's a freeze yeah. man. Yeah, that's. That's pretty bad here. That's gonna be game. Cloud9 ties it up. The Druid with losing the one matchup it actually wanted to pick up. So we still yeah. played really well. Like, yeah. it was correct to leave the Emperor. I mean, it went crazy afterwards, right? Because yeah. of what happened, but it was still correct to go for the pop block. I agree. I think uh, you can't really blame Savith in this situation, and it's unfortunate that now he's lost three. All three games that Liquid's lost has been on Savitz, and I think the stress might be building up too. Savitz is a player that is more emotional than uh, than some of the others. Yeah, it's one of the things I mean, really like it and, has and, to do something to you. And really, what is really, really the most frustrating part is if you get a matchup which you want to get, like you want to face the freeze matches Druid, right? And if you lose that, that is like really, really soul crushing. And I wonder like how Savitz is gonna like handle it. I mean, yeah, you get the sure. matchup you want to get, right? And then you lose that matchup. That's like more crushing than just losing any matchup. Yeah, and you really like mind gamed yourself into trying to position it so maybe the other the opponents would put in freeze mage. Um, yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of those, like one of those things where he knows he's gonna be at a disadvantage for the rest of the matchups if he ever picks up another one with druid. So it's, it can like it can only feel like it's gonna get worse from here when you're gonna have to replay that deck. Yeah. Well, you know, Clenta redeemed himself from last week. Last week, uh, Clenta went zero and four. This week, he is two and zero. Oh. So, Clenta yep. being able to swing the optimal momentum and get two wins very quickly, and I think he's happy to do that because we all know that Clenta has also been traveling uh, to Korea, so it's been quite uh, quite some time before he's been able to go home. In the meantime, we have Strifecrow with the Paladin and the Warlock with Ecop on the Hunter. I'm still feeling like. Uh, it's okay for anything to come out here. Generally speaking, though, I think um, I, I like to see I like to see uh, Nyria be able to come out here again because I think Savit's being queued up once more lets him be benched and then you allows you to be cornered into like picking the best matchup against Rogue and that's not what yeah. you want. 
Well, the thing is, which of the matchups is exceptionally good against Rook? I mean, Mally Lock... Hunter? Isn't, yeah, Hunter is like the closest thing you're going to get to a really good matchup. So, it's like... And if you can... Like, if Savish is banned, you can really pick your Hunter into Rook. Yeah. Yeah. Which you, usually is not possible. Do you do you think mid-range Hunter is, um, is really favored against no. Rogue, though? Not I, that I think, much. I, I think it, like it might 50, even lose. 50, but yeah. even giving the edge to Rogue slightly. Mm, I think the Lotteb is such a big deal, which you don't really think about it. Just because it allows you to clear the Rogue. Like, you have to clear every turn Rogue's minion. That's, like, the most important thing. And mid-range Hunter can do that. And it allows you to set up the high min and not lose to Zap. Like, lot of is Okay, I know strong. what you that's mean, yeah. So, like, you know you're what I mean? at least guaranteed a 5-5, five, five, and then you get a 6-5 that's also going to be hard to remove, so then the rogue has to really get... Like, she has to have had already a big weapon to flurry, otherwise she's kind of out of it. Um, yeah, and if you have this uh, high min, a rogue can't remove it. Like, if you can, yeah, like, both of them. survive to Zap. Well, it's kind of like against Freeze Mage, right? Like, there's some matchups where it all comes down to Lotha being played um, in the mid-game, like where you push for damage, or late-game, let's say, um, after Alex to prevent the OTK. There's, like, two good spots, and against the Rogue, I guess, you know, if you have the high main, that's kind of your sweet spot as a mid-range hunter. Yeah. Then it's just too much damage. Then you, it's yeah. oftentimes he's so low on life, just one kill command, whatever is enough to just kill him. Easy. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, nice. so we're predicting a Nyria rogue. I if, say yeah, probably. If if Cloud Nine predicts this, they go with Hunter themselves. And then uh, they predict this, and then they go with the uh, well, they still go with Rogue, <laughs> don't they? Well, yeah, I think the best choice here on a lot of levels is probably Rogue for Liquid, yeah. just to avoid Savits to to get benched here. Uh, they want to dodge the because e Ecop is like he's holding the gun. On the entire lineup from Liquid at the moment. Yeah, it's, if you if I looked at Ecop's face in this picture and you told me he's holding a gun, I'd, I'd probably <laughs> shoot you. It's yeah, so fitting. Right. Can he's really got that cold it. light oracle crazy look. You it's like the rumble. He's, he's a, there's a little screws <laughs> loose in there. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few problems with that guy. I wouldn't trust him with my child. All right. Oh, I think that's a great babysitter ad. <laughs> I, li I like the guy who's photobombing show. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have to ask uh, Ecop if I can use that picture in a fake babysitter <laughs> ad. <laughs> you know what? That would be the greatest thing. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your kids are? Yeah. <laughs> Strifeco versus Nyria is coming up here. It's Warlock versus the Rogue. Um, I feel like Rogue would be okay against this, but then I also think about cards like Twilight Drake and how problematic it is already for Rogue to deal with. And it's it's that there are threats, but um, they're not impossible to deal with with Rogue. So I feel like it's definitely easier than it is against Handlock. And I already think Rogue is pretty decent against Handlock. So Yeah, the, the biggest part is really that the, you don't have the Molten Giant mind games which you have against Handlock. That's, that makes, I think... In general, it's easy to play against Malilok just because you. It's like the biggest thing when you play around uh, against Handlock, right? It's like the right. biggest difference mm -hmm. that you always know. Are not sure like, I'm, am I pushing out for damage? Do I play around Molten Giants? Like, when do I start playing around Molten Giants? Yeah, and how much life do I keep him? And you don't have that against Malilok. It's like a really big difference. You just go for it, you know. I think, um, interestingly enough, like Zoo and uh, you know mid-range Demon is, is like the two more difficult Warlocks. Because otherwise, I think Rogue is doing very well against them. And even then, you're still maybe slightly favoring some variants against even those faster Warlock decks. Also, the pressure from Handlock is much higher. If he gets mm -hmm. the Giant out on four, you have to kill it or you're dead. In like yep. the curse of two or three turns. But look, plays like a. Places like a uh, imp gang boss or something, you know. Yeah, I mean, this is basically like if you're the rogue player, you just push for damage whenever you have it. Like the only things that are gonna stop you are two heal bots, um, which anyway, handlock also has. But there's the use there in the warlock hand, so that could come in handy. Yeah, but again, I think um, it's like we always mention the the blade flurry here won't necessarily be actually wow. against. Wow, four on the. Well, that's future kind of stinks for the rogue, but um, I think <clears throat> against uh, warlock specifically, though, rogue is more inclined to camp than uh, against other classes, so that could be useful. That's such a huge implosion. 
I think that the old, it's also huge that you follow up with Blackwing Corruptor. The amount of tempo you gain on the board through Implosion for four and Blackwing Corruptor on curve, that like is insane. for full value, is yeah. just nuts. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Like, like what? The this difference is so hard to like, come back. The, the difference between like getting a two or three or four yeah. is like, ridiculous when you put it. It's, but it's, like, if you think you about it, clear it. It's like the same play twice, except they just spread it out. So Implosion creates eight stats and does four damage and just spreads it out. And then this does three damage, but nine stats all in it's one body. It it's just like such a game. huge swing for Mal. It was like now it's like Emperor Thorazin comes down pretty easily. And I, I actually wanted to bring that up early when we were talking about Marigos Lock. Like, I think that it's, whenever I watch this deck being played, it really comes down to Implosion luck. Like, because it changes so much, like, the entire curse of the game, like, he, in this situation, like, he had no answer for Violet Teacher, and suddenly he had, like, the best answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, is, uh, is, is this even a good hand for Emperor Thorson? It's not very powerful, now that I look at it. Like... The thing is, yeah, yeah, but the, the thing is, it should be difficult to kill. Like, he just used the spell power, and usually, like, five toughness is one of the sweet spots, Everything that has four health just gets eviscerated. But uh, so it, there's a chance it survives, and that's like where you like. There's two ways of playing emperors. You play it with like a good um, quality mm -hmm. uh, hand quality, like, and another oh, way is yeah. there's a chance it survives. And if it survives, it's just absolute nuts. Yeah, yeah, too much tempo being gained through the mana reduction. But I kind of feel like very often in Mali Lock, you're really trying to push for that extra, you know, Maligos. Synergy, like he's got the, the Hellfire and the Coil at least. Yeah. Is it gonna be worth it? But like a four mana Drake has nothing to scoff at. Like three mana defend of Argus again. But one um, of the sickest parts are not even it's like the coil with Maligos. Yeah, it's, like six damage so, straight up. It's so huge. Sap on Antonitis. That's Antonitis. Oh man, please don't give the Warlocks Antonitis. <gasps> I am quitting this game. <laughs> I am out. Oh, sorry, sorry, not the Antonitis, the Thors. <laughs> no, of course, I know, I know what you meant. I mean, and that is huge for Strife Crew, right? So he knows that there was no answer for it. Uh -huh. So uh, he get, gets like another turn of Emperor, it's like really sick. Like, that's why it was so worth it to play the Emperor last turn. Yeah, now you get uh, Mortal Coil too. for two, yeah. and you get to draw. Yeah, and he can still life turn. Yeah, because, you know, why not? Why not? I just, I just played 20 mana. I just gonna laugh then. Oh man, I, I, this is, looks so bad for Naria just because of the Emperor. Because he will get... Now he can choose the second Emperor. He got already so much value out of it. Yeah, if he now throws he it just as a throw away, like he doesn't even care about it anymore. Oh wow. Oh, and the Malagos gets picked up. That is what you want to reduce. Yeah, but there's no, there's one soul fire. Never mind. I was gonna say there's no, there's no like big damage spell like dark bomb. Well, there's hellfire. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of face damage. But it is only, it is only becomes three mana. You're right. It's not actually that impactful. Mm -hmm. It's like you kind of want to wait for the dark bomb because you have Malagos already, so you can wait out on that emperor to really just get maximum lethal possibility with it. Well, this also sets up, um, you know, an equally big board. Or not or like a better board, and you can protect the emperor if you can't deal with this efficiently. He already used a sap. He's gonna have to have a second one exactly. And I, I like this Doctor Boom though yep. in the road. Well, I feel like this might be an opportunity for Hellfire, but at the same time, it's not even that great considering that it kills off your own defender of Argus. Weapon, mm -hmm. weapon seems like the the ooze seems sort of, sort of interesting because I mean even if you just kill Lothab, um, with the defender that's enough. Like the Hellfire again is maybe a bit of an overpaying for the effect you get out of it. Yeah, if you're yeah, gonna lose enough. the defender anyway, maybe you just play Drake, trade the Lothab. <clears throat> like you just go back to building the board again. Just yeah. The thing is, you can't even set up like a two-turn kill either, because um, you only have two points of burn, like you mentioned. And Hellfire plus Soulfire is only 17 damage, from what I count. I think the tempo is going to be good enough to really threaten Naria here. Okay, so this is a big tempo turn. Yeah, the Shadow Flame play. 
Okay. Perfectly fine if he just wants to start getting, you know, ways to peck in there. And now he can set up so that if these minions do a little bit of damage and control the board, then he can play Emperor Thorsten and then he can go for a kill the following turn. So this is a three turn plan here from Strife Crow. It's gonna get slowed down a bit by the heal block, but not that much really. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. Strife Crow with the pickups. That's so big. Yeah. And the boom bots are not even that good against Imp Gang boss too, because the one ones that spawn. Yeah, he will probably just attack with the Imp Gang boss first. Hope to get. Oh no! Oh, he's dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that sucks. Dead. So what does he do with that other little boom bot? There's nothing you can really do yeah. against it, right? Yeah. It's you still fire it. I mean, that's the obvious answer. I think it's time to set up for the lethal. You have 17 damage from the Malagos on the following yeah. turn. Mm -hmm. You might, you might even pick up Dark Bomb. I don't even know if there's like any combination of cards Rook can have. Double Isle. Well, it would have to be like Prep Sprint into Oil Blade Flurry specifically, because that's exactly 10 mana and it sort of wipes the board with the Boom Bot. But it's like, get lucky, yeah. mate. Even if he had Blade Flurry just off instead of that Prep, it would have been enough to clear the board here. Mm -hmm. Well, wow, nice Boom Bot. It's so funny that Boombot's always go for the BGH, right? Is it just yeah. me? <laughs> it always goes for the BGH! Our dad. <laughs> oh man, don't start yeah. with the dad stuff. Chat, the chat, my <laughs> chat experience. <laughs> it's dead. Ah! It always goes for the BGH! <laughs> dad is dead! Stop boying dad. Yeah. Well... I pretty much think um, he's forced to play everything, right? Yes, but the thing is he can't... He was hoping to kill off the BGH, I guess, so that way he can deadly poison SI the Emperor and then just the Emperor, heal yeah. like The heal bot could slow things down if the boom bots weren't so bad. Yeah, but I think Nyrian knows that uh, there's a strong chance that he's dead here. Actually, he's one point up? No, 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 he's one oh, point up. Oh, with down. that, yeah, he's uh... yeah. So that should be it. Strife go. Barring any uh, really poor sequencing, like getting too ahead of yourself and soul firing before Hellfire and discards it, that would end up being the, the match here. The that old Warlock life. Top, top nine, top four, three. Yeah. I wonder if anyone ever killed himself except that accidentally with uh, a damage Hellfire. I haven't seen that one It has to have happened. Yeah. Three damage shell fire sometimes by not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, eight. Yeah, it's more likely to first put in your own face. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Yeah, for Remember sure. Remember that ECOP game? Well, uh, that was Clento's first win, I believe, which means uh, the only person that hasn't been able to get a win is Savit so far. Yeah. Well, I mean, Neria still has to win with the Rogue. But the matchups that are ahead of him are still kind of okay. Like, it's like it still comes down again to that Druid. Like, what's it going to do against Paladin? That's pretty rough. Against Hunter, that's, that could also be rough. But at the same time, you could pull it off against, I think, Hunter almost more comfortably it's than pretty Paladin. even matchup, Paladin mm -hmm. versus Druid. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a... Then What's again, like, he Harris hasn't gotten an unfair stuff? one. Like, no unfair start, which is usually what carries you. Like, you can play against any deck. As Druid, you get an unfair start. Like, they very often do with a single wild growth start. And then you can't stop them. It doesn't matter what you do. But all the games that he's played so far have been kind of on the slow side of things. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, I guess uh, now we come down to either the, the Paladin and the Hunter up against these classes and... I think Hunter is really safe to go from here. I think you want to give as many chances to the Paladin as possible. Um, Paladin can beat Rogue. I mean, Rogue can beat itself, and top of Paladin can curve out really well. Assuming this is, assuming this is the mid range, or a control Paladin. If Strifeco is playing aggressive Paladin, then he's in a great spot. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Yeah, if you can think that far ahead, like as a team, and you have that spot, and then everyone expects you to play control. And then wow, you... that's that is pretty next level from Cloud Nine to like make it seem like. Uh, and then you have like Paladin. the most aggressive yeah. Lepanome Paladin. 
it's like the it's, it's, it's hobgoblin with wisps and stuff and you're like wow i thought this deck died four months ago Whistle yeah hobgoblin but... paladin all of a sudden that's right then you, you know, get owned it'd be fun though i mean it's, uh, it's one of those things like it, it lived for what two weeks and then it, it just faded away and only savage played it like in yeah games. He's the only player who brought it. And I think he did like, yeah. he got a few wins and then he retired it. Like, just to say, hey, you know what? I came in with this funky deck and I took a few wins. Look at how good it was. Now I'm out. I'm never playing that's, it again. That's well, he actually kinda... brought it to um, several tournaments. He brought it mm -hmm, to like yeah. Seed Story. He brought it to ESL. And he, he has like a 60% win rate with that deck. It certainly wasn't the weak link. I think it just became a little like too predictable. So he started playing other stuff. And then, you know, it's just since moved on because Hobgoblin Paladin is like inferior to like some of the other decks that are out there that are really aggressive. Um, so, but it was really interesting to see it do well. It's kind of sad that it a little bit died out compared to back in the yeah. days last year. Actually, That's I think that is one of the few cases in Conquest this year where we've had one deck that's just iconic to a player. Yeah, like yeah. every other deck, I feel like that's gotten popular has been used by so many people. But Savis was literally the only player that Mech was the Warrior player. Life Coach. That's the other one I've got. Oh yeah, that's okay, like okay. the only other one, maybe. Mech uh, there were only like also very few people that played uh, Fatigue Mage. I think that only Colento and Savis played it in tournaments. Mm. It's uh, like Chucky one of those iconic. Chucky also did. Oh yeah. oh yeah, and yeah. then yeah. there's. But one tournament, Shrek right? Shrek right, Shrek right. Big difference. It was like <laughs> Mech, I think Mech drew it from yeah. uh, Dog. Also, Gar, didn't you play it one tournament? Uh, Fatigue Mage? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You played against Fatigue Mage. Yeah, against. <laughs> and it was against Savage. <laughs> oh, my God. Why. It was against Savage. Gar was really salty after losing to Fatigue Mage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would be too. Right. No, man. Good times. But that's so cool. I think this is one of the coolest things in Hearthstone when someone has like an iconic deck. It's... Yeah, and no one else chooses to play it. Yeah, I like it's good and nobody else plays it. That's like yeah. awesome. Bloodlust Champion. Would... No, it's even cooler if it's bad and he's the only one playing it and winning with it. Right? Yeah. Th oh, that's, that is really cool. Like Pirate with Blood Cell Corsair has to happen. Xixo, you're on it, right? Mm. He's got to be... Just waiting for that. One day, one day. Yeah. Or, or like, um, like Murloc Shaman. Oh, the man. Murloc Lock. I mean, Murloc Lock. Yeah. Like, Tights brought it as well. Like, it was not bad, right? But nobody decided to play it in a tournament. Uh, <laughs> Stuff like that is so cool. Well, he's got the wild And he growth, won with it. Right? So that could be the unfair start that he needs to yeah. really start pushing for tempo. I don't know if this is intentional, but Savitz is deck is teched very well against Paladin. He's got Mind Control tech, Harrison Jones. Um, he's got like really good cards to fight back onto the board as after the Wild Growth too. So I, th I think as long as um, as long as he can stabilize once, maybe uh, maybe Paladin will try to come back again. But uh, I think generally speaking, he has the tools, but can he keep up with the pace of the Paladin? Because after turn four, Shrefko has a choose over champion, but he still needs a little help to get to Dr. Boom safely. Strifeco's deck is kind of scary because um, he ran Quartermasters last week, so it's like reasonable to expect that again. So you have to kill those 1-1s. One -ones. It's like a different playstyle where you know you have to kill those 1-1s one -ones than to knowing he doesn't have Quartermaster and you can just ignore it. It's like you make your weaker plays automatically. Like, if you know you can ignore the one once, you might as well go for, like, Shades and stuff. Yeah, or like I see what the you claw. Mean. Mm -hmm. But now you just know you have to kill him. Yeah, like, if well, you, you play also, Shades, you don't do anything. Yeah, it's true. But you do know that he doesn't have the coin because you have the coin, so you still have one more turn to deal with the one once. Right. Yeah, I mean, you could probably MC Tech, so like, MC Tech is the equivalent of, you know, using two mana up to kill one, except you get a slight tempo boost out of it. Not a huge one, mind you, but... Like, the thing is, if he gets, like, a Quartermaster on three or so dudes, it might be game over. Because Druids... usually can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. He has the MC Tag, but... <laughs> MC Tag... It's just like, so yeah. good against Dr. Boom sometimes. It feels like, like okay, Gara, how many times has your Dr. Boom been stolen by an MC Tech? Oh, not just Dr. Booms, man. M MC Tech stole everything he wanted so far. 
Oh man, if there was it's a quartermaster a... here, wait, if there was a quartermaster, this would be excruciating because a... you can't even MC tech, like you have to wrath. Wow. It's such a random way to win a game with MC yeah. tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's Hoffu's like, most hated card, I think, in arena. Like, no, he's All not right. considering it. Yeah, it's true. It, it is really swingy in arena for sure because it steals like the boldest ogre every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> every time I hear kidding. those words, like it's the worst thing is my boldest man. It can't do anything, <laughs> dude. Poor boulder you fist. Joke, but boldest ogre is some had lived some serious weight before like GVG came out, and like you know, yeah, because that that type of RNG is not fun. Because the difference of, of the well, outcomes it's is... kind of fun. It's fun for me when I take the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I play it, it doesn't do that. It just steals like the one one. Not the boom bot. The oh, one the boom one. bot's the, also really good. Because then... It, it doesn't take know, the boom bot. Obviously, the mind control tech trades into boom. And then you hit this boom bot and you hit boom bo Dr. Boom for four. It's a full board clear. You know, I kind of like this play just because uh, if there's a true silver, no normal thing happens. If there's a quartermaster, you're at least killing two of those guys. So. Yeah, the thing about True Silver though is that True Silver is set up and he still has a minion on board so he can answer most likely whatever can come out for 5 health. There's no there's no card in Druid that's a common rotation that's uh, more than 5 health. So this yeah. one one surviving or even the zombie trap coming out is a really big deal. Um, Cuz it sets up for a safer Sylvanas which sets up for a safer Doctor Boom. Maybe the shade is the reason he made that play, because that way he's got a minion that the true silver will not take out, and he snap plays it. So maybe that was the reasoning. Yeah, that could be a good point. But this also goes back to show you of like the ramifications of Strifeco consecrating mm -hmm. just for you know three, just for like uh, to kill off this three three potential that can do ever control the board here. So I think um, like a lot of this is the consequence of Strifeco planning his turns ahead of time. Some Looks bonus. like Strafko is favorite just because uh, he has the Dr. Boom and Savish doesn't have to be GH right now. Man, that oh, he's MC, got the tech, MC tech, man. It really c might come down to the MC tech RNG. I wonder. Then we're going to get nerf MC tech posts. It's toxic for the game. Probably the worst minion to steal would be the zombie chow. No, by far, yeah. <laughs> Don't like, hey, do you want five this. life? Here's a holy light for you. Take that. <laughs> I th um, let's see, Shrefko has to also be thinking about the ramifications of playing like Sylvanas now versus loading up similar power on the board with Pilot Shredder and having something stick. And then that way, if he even has like Swipe and BGH or something like that to deal with his board, he'd be more resilient. No Sylvanas is like the better guaranteed board clear though, because then Shade can't sit here camping forever. And not to mention that... Um, like it also halts future development because like he can't just play Doctor Boom this turn, for example, oh, which man. he could have if the pilot came out. He picks up his own Doctor Swag now, and it's green. Yeah. Usually, it's like an indication that you're playing. I hope. I wish that Blizzard would make it orange actually on turn seven because yeah. you know when it's orange, you know it just it's tells like you enabled. that the game is like, <laughs> okay, you probably should play this. <laughs> like with some warning <laughs> so lights. <laughs> it's like with a tooltip popping up. <laughs> It's you like should play this card. card as, as you have. <laughs> this is like that would be the best like April Fool tooltip implementation. <laughs> this you just drew this card. Oh, just you can play watch it. next year, man. It's happening. You should play gonna it. Be like, <laughs> how long do you think it'll take before Doctor Boom is not a staple of a lot of uh, mid range decks anymore? Like, um, that's what know, I wonder very is, often. There's just, there's just a few cards that are wait that are looming that will take mm -hmm. its place that people will complain about. Yeah. You know, people for people like always make fun of the fact that they predicted Trogs were to be really good, and then they just then they just got replaced by Doctor Boom. But if Trogs were ever got to the point where it was like Doctor Boom was bad and the meta was just slightly slow enough that Trogs were to be super dominant, people would be asking for the same thing. They're like, yeah. "Oh, I can't play spells. Where's the interaction in that?" Like Patron, right? What is the interaction in that? Yeah, the point is people will complain about everything. Another legendary will take place at the best legendary. It could be a common. I mean, Undertaker style. Sure. Yeah. That said, I, I hope Doctor Boom can die in a grease fire. Well, at BGH, killing Doctor Boom. This mind control deck is just doing nothing. You kind of have to play the Hungry Dragon, right? We at least his swipe is super. Look, again. Oh my god. Oh. 
Revenge. Boomba's Boomba always man. killing BGHs. Do it's it, like, Dad. Yeah. But it gave awful. time for Savitz to pick up the BGH for the Dr. Boom from Strive Crow, yeah, though. Yeah, that's huge. That's a really big outcome for him. Like, it's really important. And he gets, like, a perfect curve. Wow. Kills a 2-2. That's like... Uh, that clear was insane. Yeah. And then, um, you know, maybe Strife Crow feels like the opportunity to play Dr. Boom. And then he plays Big Game Hunter. And then the Boombots kill the Big Game Hunter right back. This Which is how will. war started, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a nonstop um, revenge kill after revenge kill. Violence yeah. is not the answer. Like, yeah. in. Never is. Um, yeah. Make love, not war. The thing, the reason. Uh, oh, this cash has got really real. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, guys. We can do I, 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 Leon Hens is usually very difficult to develop um, against Druid. Yeah. And I feel like that was a good turn to play Leon Hens. Just to get more options and stuff. Because if he has the BGH for the Dr. Boom, you will be behind on board. And how do you uh, come back on board? It's impossible. You have not the cards. And then you're always like uh, threatened, then always threatened by lethal from the combo. Yeah, with a combo. So check, check Yeah, I out. see what you mean. That, that's like... The, because no, no, no. no. Many check, people. check this out, guys. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> Goodbye, this big game hunter. <laughs> you will be missed. Although that second juggler is really going to make the muster for battle a lot better. Well, so far not really, but you know. Just stop taking the second juggler. Oh, man. oh, never mind oh. that. <laughs> it's like every RNG hates. What the hell? <laughs> what is Whoa. even happening? Look at this. Okay. It's like every RNG in the game hates BGH. Everything is going for the BGH. So what does uh, MC Tech? Take. Takes the boom bottom. Actually, if MC Tech takes um, then a knife juggler, it doesn't gain a juggle, right? We'll mm, actually, see it best. does. Yeah, it does get one. It does because of yeah. the way the battle cry triggers before the uh, yeah. Minion. And if it swaps, it, it could swap turns twice, like from Sylvanas to. I'm gonna call Sylvanas. it the Sutrek the swipe. Damn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, tried. I was feeling it, guard. I I, th I think there was some potential there. I believed in you. <laughs> That's so epic if you actually get it, right? To play the Zoo Drake to Juggle! Juggler? And to kill off the Boombot? Into, into uh, nothing, yeah, I told you. No, to kill you into your own Drake dies, that's kind of how it happens. Never lucky. <laughs> well, then again, this is not too bad either. I mean, he's got a Lay on Hands turn, he's gonna get full health value out of it, plus three cards. So. But there's really no two drop left in his deck, as far as I know. Like, he mini bots mini would have to come out right now. Alright. I think we spray a little bit more here, right? Yeah. Oh, that looks very good to strive. Spread the love. Just to oh. rapid fire. Okay. So, kill off the 1-1 one -one with the weapon, right? Oh, I guess the boom button makes sense. Wow, really? It usually eats uh, Zudrix as well. Like Does this just people. happen? <laughs> Does this just happen, right? Like, I'm I witnessing this. So. Death, okay. Rattle, Kill, and Azure Drake? But, um, you know, also the juggle hitting the face on the, um, first the, game. yeah, on the first juggle off the reinforce ends up being, costing him a juggler too. Oh, not bad. Yeah, and Druid's hand is better than, uh, that of the, the Paladins, yeah. I feel. So, maybe this is an opportunity for Savitz to climb back into the game. Remember, Savitz has not won a single game with this Druid deck, and he also has refused to reveal his Warlock. So he's really insistent on making this Druid work. Hmm. Uh, he's deciding whether or not he wants to innervate out of the Shredder, right? Yeah, but it dies to the Knife Juggler. You need to keep the, the Keeper of the Grove for the uh, Tyrion. So. Well... Strife is also out of Master for Battle, right? He played one early in the mm -hmm. game, and yep. the second one just now. So the quartermasters are kind of. Can you just like tempo your opponent, like mini bot, hero power quartermaster, and then mm. just push face? That's what I'm thinking at the moment. Because he's so far out of lethal range, even with combo at the moment, that he could probably just try to force Savis to play defensively. And if Savis doesn't pick up taunts, then usually you're going to be fine, and you still have an Iron Beak Owl to go through it. So. And he also just saw the MC tech. Oh yeah, unless he has a second MC tech. Oh, oh man, man. Can you imagine? Catch him off guard here. Flipping the game upside down. He'll never expect the second. He'll definitely not expect the third. <laughs> you never expect the second. <laughs> you usually don't expect the first one, but you never expect yeah. Wow, that's awkward. 
Let's see. Double uh, keeper. So now he's threatened of dying here. Yeah. What? He can silence and place Sylvanas and remove four damage off the board. So then there's uh, two, four, five, nine damage with True Silver. He would die to a Consecrate. Mm-hmm. Or Seal of Light. There's a lot of good ways to do this. Seal of Light. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a card that I saw. What's his name? <laughs> Stan Kibler Sips played play. it. Yeah, Stan Sips Kibler. Kibler. And they were like super anti-Hunter tech cards, and they still lost Hunter. That's so cool. I used to play one random hammer grab card run so I can <laughs> remove it. <laughs> it's like, is he playing Control Pally? I don't know anymore, man. There's a Hammer Breath right there. Hammer Breath is an aggro paladin too sometimes. Yeah, every time. They will never expect the, ran uh, the random Hammer Breath. He's actually just going to take uh, 8 damage here. Like He's setting himself up to be on 3 health, so he's actually out of range of contact. Does it make you guys die a little inside that you realize like... You know, Hammer of Wrath versus Quick Shot, and you're just like, oh my god, the difference in mana. I gave up. I gave up on the <laughs> Hammer of Wrath and like close beta. Man. I, I did. I my, I wept a little bit for the Paladin as soon as close I saw beta. Quick Shot. I was like, rip in peace, Hammer of Wrath. Where's my Hammer of Wrath now? It would actually be a lethal. <laughs> That's right. It. Oh, <laughs> the best argument I've ever made for Hammer of Wrath. It would be lethal. Mm. Well, this, yeah, for continuing that train of thought, there's a lot of things. You could have played Nightblade for lethal. Do you mean Stormpike Commando is now tier one? <laughs> in a, you know, in some situations, it's not bad. You saw it in uh, Challenge Stone be pretty effective. I don't know if yeah. you need to silence those Sylvanas. I think um, on the off chance that something gets stolen, you can use it to push past the taunt for lethal. With yeah, the I think uh, you could kill your own Sylv here if you're uh, if you're Savis. Yeah, but that's a really desperate call to steal his biggest minion, like um, the Quartermaster, perhaps, or even the Minibot. I'd even take the the one two slime here. Like, hmm. yeah, I don't know. Like, how desperate am I at this point? Like, with Savage War, how much can you push? Like, how what can you kill? Because that's really the ultimate question. Is like, how do I live through this turn? It's nice that I can. Remove some of that stuff. There's a lot of damage. This is kind of the strength of mid range pally too nowadays. Like they can really just turn the tide around tempo wise, which is not something control pally used to do. Yeah, I, I really like yeah. the tempo play as opposed to the board control play he had a few turns ago. In fact, I really like the way Strifeco played this game um, from mm -hmm. begin to end. That's not a very controversial statement that I'll make, but um, I think generally speaking, he played like very well and just according to how Paladin should approach this matchup, because I've seen too many Paladins play. Control oriented when there's a lot of opportunities to be tempo. Well, it's gonna be it for Savic again with the Druid losing the game to Paladin on top of all the rest. So that's four losses for Savic's Druid, I think. Yeah, not the best day for. It's so mean. Board. It feels like in so many oh, games, man. there's always one guy. There's always one guy that's. Uh, Including shrugged. myself. Like, so Trump and then Savic okay. here getting the. You're carrying the, the cast. That's what, that's what you get to do today. There's Tiddler, I think, had the problem again in week one, right? If I remember, like, Tiddler didn't win yep. a single game. Uh, yeah. Tiddler and Kalento, two players who were touted right. as, like, the aces of their team, end up um, getting pounded in week one. Not the same case today. Kalento is 2 0 and done for uh, Cloud9. Shrifecrow is actually done for Cloud9 as well, I believe. So that means only Ecop remains as Cloud9 is up 5 to 3 and Savits. And Nyria have to win against this hunter. And I have to point out that it wasn't a misplay to not attack the Shredder first from Kalento in the Freeze Mage game because he played around Neruba Weblord. Because ah, if he gets okay. that, he can't Alexstrasza. That's right. So it's better, it's better to play around Neruba Weblord than it is the Unholy around, Trinity. Uh, the Unholy Trinity ne is Doomsayer. You're right, you're right. It's like, just like, yeah. Ruba Never Lord fire shots at Kalento, man, if you can't pick it up 100%. Oh, snap. Right. <laughs> well, you're Unholy right, Jack. You're right our about way. that. It makes a lot of sense. It's not a misplay at all, actually. He's got like Clanto two cards works. instead of one. Clanto works around. in mysterious ways, and he gets the wins. Mm -hmm. He gets the wins. Plays Priest, too. Sometimes. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like when uh, the thing with when you play a lot of rogues and then you see them killing Shredder's last, it's mostly because of um, Cho, right? It's just different card you play around. You rather play around Cho than around Dooms here, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Low Walker Cho. Oh, man. 
you know, this guy, like, I, I wish some people one day, like, they nerfed it so much that it's now unplayable, but it used to be a one mana one three, um, with the exact same effect. Like, it was really toxic in the small community that played it, because, like, you could play it in the zoo. And it was so good as a one mana one three. Which, uh, sorry. Lord oh, Walker Show. Lord Walker Show, yeah. Was it one three? I thought it was. One it was a four. one mana one three, and then it became a two mana one four. But, like, initially it was a one mana card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was one of the one four. Okay. Low Walker Cho is still great. Did you see, you see that game with Nairia versus uh, Dog, right, Gara? Oh my god. I casted that one. Were was, you? Yeah. I thought it was, okay, I thought it was me, Nimsh, and Lothar, but I guess it was me. That was like... Yeah, mind blown. I mean, mistakes were made, but it's insane. A lot insane. of mistakes were made by everybody. Yeah, it's yeah. like impossible to play right. <laughs> You're like, which spell do I feed him, and when, and how? how do I and then when it? it gets buffed up by the oil, you're like, well, I guess I gotta keep this guy now. And the funny no. thing is, people are so persistent. Nobody wants to kill it. Like, <laughs> nobody wants to kill it first. It's like, oh, I want your spells. Yeah. Like, I want to play through with my death spite, man. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. By the way, guys, uh, you, you saw the uh, Twitter coming in once in a while. In fact, we have it pulled up right now. Loving this tournament. Amaz, something to look forward to every day before work. And uh, all you need to do is to hashtag ATLC and you too get 10 seconds of Twitter fame. Shout out to Crazy K for being able to join in the conversation. We have Ecop versus somebody. It's a rogue player, so that has to be Nyria. Alright, so... Somebody. It's looking really good for Cloud9, man. Free, free tries on Midrange Hunter. Uh, it's bound to take at least, uh, you know, one very often. You know, they just have to run at it often enough. You'll eventually get a win. Well, it's but against the, matchups that it might even be good against, right? The yeah. Druid and the we rogue. don't know the Warlock yet, but the Rogue, according to Gara, and Gara's a you know a big time hunter player. You know, he's he's feeling the the hunter here too. And and it, yeah, he has like a lot of the core cards. Like the boys are really important card because you need to kill the the free drops. He has the coin Misha into Misha, which is also, you know, a PUP. <laughs> Actually, the uh, kill command is also underrated because killing Violet Teacher is also super important. Yeah, if it's not played with a prep and a removal piece very often, you'll get it. There you it go. Call it. That's, uh... Coin Misha into Misha. Hmm. Yeah, that's really annoying to deal with. You can kill it. Just give up preparation, or you can deal with it through saps and stuff, too. Whoa, but you want to save that prep for the Violet Teacher, right? Because you so Violet Teacher prep gosh. sap. Yeah, I'd imagine. You but if he coins it. Animal Companions, you know he has a three mana play again, right? You have to save the zap for the costas, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sap me, I got a Weez Alright, you are so clever, oh my god. <laughs> Let's save the sap for the casters. <laughs> Literally the funniest man in Bosnia. <laughs> this guy's a There's one man in Bosnia, no? How many people? Like 8 million or something. <laughs> There's a lot. I know, uh, man. A lot of, there's a lot more than you think, um, for sure. There's more yeah, people I in Twitch than in Bosnia. I got, I got accused of uh, not knowing what I was talking about, because I, I went to Poznan in Poland, right? And I said I went to like a small city in Poland. I meant like... I meant a city, and I said a small city, and it's like the second biggest city in Poland. <laughs> and I knew that, and people just jumped on my Actress, throat. You're not even American. Uh, you can't say that kind of stuff. Be careful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was accused of being American multiple times because <laughs> of that statement. Uh, it's good stuff. Well, you can, what? Teacher is not American? No. No. Noxious well, North is... American, I guess. I could, I could be considered one. I'm like from Canada. Yeah, he's from Canada. Yeah. I hail from Crip He's from U.S. light. You want to deal with this Violet Teacher as soon as possible, like you said, because the freezing traps and or just the traps in general are dealt with so well with the one ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, you like, can't really deal with the one ones hmm. if you don't have Unleash. He doesn't have it. Right, Knife Dragon Unleash is your best counter. All right, quick shot. You have yeah, you two can see with display. Yeah. This part. Do you play Knife Dragon though, or do you just hear? No. It's a deadly poison. I don't know if I would sacrifice it. Mm -hmm. Because you can get it with the Animal Companion next turn, right? As a mid-range hunter, it's not so important to value the hero power every turn as much as with more aggressive hunters. You just want to play minions and force your opponent to um, use removals on it. 
But his hand, the thing is that his hand is very aggressive. So you, you kind of have to switch up your play style. You really have, to, like, according to your hand. If his hand would be like a high main, he would have played the 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 knife jack just to force removals. But if you have like a lot of burst damage, you value the. Oh, wow, man, that sucks. this tempo heal bot. I don't <laughs> think I've seen. Like, I never thought I'd say those words, mm. but. This well, it's is basically a, a second Farseer for lack of a better. <laughs> uh, you know, appropriate yeah. response. All weapons are used, though. Yeah, and if this is a Misha. Tempo heal bot. Oh, man, what on earth is going on? I, I told you, double Misha, man. I think he just. Oh, never mind. That's gonna solve the problem. Spell power allows oh, you to click. Oh, nice. Aw, oh, the sprint. You might not need sprint next turn because you have Dr. Boom, but the following turn, that's great. And the Hunter Hand is really bad. It got worse and worse, and now it, it's also very off curve, like no matter how you look at it. It's all because of the tempo here, boy. <laughs> just all hail your five. <laughs> your, this was like the worst three drop, like three three I've ever seen. And, still. and uh, Rio loves to see that play, man. That looks really <laughs> like a desperation play. Right. I'll kill command here, pa. He's like, yeah, that that works. <laughs> no high main, I can do. I can do this. I get the for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Boom! Wow. Fight back onto the board. Now there is another kill command to stabilize, but Hunter used most of his damage at that point. Yeah, but to followed by Lothab, it's not half bad, is it? No, it's definitely not bad at all, considering that you can control the state of the board, and you're hoping that you can catch a sprint. There he is. He's also, oh. he's also so low on life already, the hunter. Oh, you're right, because you don't you don't want this one one to actually die, because then it challenges low. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, but it absorbed damage, like we were yeah, talking. Yeah, five about. three damage is like almost yeah. lethal. I mean, it's totally <laughs> irrelevant. 14 minus 3, 11. It's almost lethal. But you know yeah, what? It's actually true in this case, though. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's actually really close. When you look That's, at the way Rogue operates. Isn't it, isn't it kind of funny, though? It's like, Ecot was at like half life, which means he's dead, practically, to a lot of decks. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. You have to kill it. Like, if he, if the juggle misses, oh, you have to oh, run the lot of face. Hit face! Okay, he, he definitely got lucky oh, oh. I told you, almost lethal, man. Oh, Oof. you're right, you're right. Those so bombs, go. man, those bombs. Oh my goodness, so Wait. close. Yeah, well, no, you oh, sap high main, then you think you're an attack face. I think you sap the high main and you just go for it, right? Yeah. One damage of lethal. Wait for the, the and heal then bot. I mean, our master. Bot. Oh, I doesn't even sap. He oh, needs to of... get past the taunt. Makes sense. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, if you top decks. Ooh! Up. Imagine if that was misdirection. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the crazy plays? Yeah. That would be so hilarious. Oh he would my. probably just sprint for some damage. Does That's he cop try to mind games in the area or just escape concede? Oh my god. I, I want to see the random misdirection in the tournament. Someone getting a win of it. Wait, epic. Yeah, okay. He has the eviscerate just in case. Man up in the area. Oh, oh wow. that's a, that's a, it is a play around in misdirection, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah you're right. right. Never mind. Didn't matter misdirection. What are we talking about? And now about? the misdirection doesn't go off. Yeah, vanish the casters, but never mind this. <laughs> Alright, well, that's gonna keep Liquid alive. Five to four. E Cup has another chance, but we did think that this was the best chance for Liquid to win. And that also means Nyria is done for the day. Which means the big story. Let's get Savis to do this. Yeah. If Savis can more take this. Oh. If Savis can take this, then we also have another thing where Ecop has lost, would be losing five games for his team, too. Because uh, he's racked up some losses himself. And it's. Uh, yeah, I think he's at three very now, right? Sorry, what? He's uh, two losses with the Hunter and one with the Warrior. Uh, yes, correct. Uh, right now, Ecop's one and three. Uh, Savitz is zero and four, and um, right now they're they're probably, they're they're basically given the same exact role, which is don't don't lose to the person that's been struggling today. And we we don't know the warlock of Savitz, but usually every warlock tends to be unfavored against Hunter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So both decks seem to be pretty bad against Hunter. There is uh, one archetype that actually beats Hunter every time. 
And it's the uh, hyper healing warlock with like every removal piece you could think of. Like every single bit. It's only good against like three decks. And nobody it's something plays you would it. play, man. Yeah, nobody plays it because it's just so horrendous Whoa, against the, like on the ladder. But in tournaments, it's just so bad. Like in tournaments, it's actually viable. But in ladder, it's so terrible. Uh. Noxus would bring back like Agro Priest, super <laughs> hyper healing <laughs> wallet. Wait, 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 wait. Noxus, did you actually test that Agro Priest at all? Not the one in Challenge Stone, but there's an, there's a legitimate Agro Priest that was like. Top it's 10 more Chinese. It's like a tempo fighter. priest. Like, I looked at it. People told me it's the aggro priest you've always wanted to play. I'm like, no, it's not running leper gnomes and shadow, bo like shadow bombers, no. right? Like, it's, it's got it's, like uh, um, two mind blasts and, yeah. and yeah, stuff like that. No, nobody played more aggro priest in tournaments than Noxious. Yeah. Oh, wow. I've got this to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> one more and he has a 100% win rate with it. It's your yeah, iconic it's deck. Yeah, dude, that's exactly what I am. The thing is, I've worked so hard to make it work, but it's just so horrendous. <laughs> oh man, MC Tech's actually not even half bad against Hunter. It's in fact quite good, in some cases. But if you know your opponent runs MC Tech, that makes it so much worse. Yeah, that's like, a good point. Although, I feel like... I feel like MC Tech is not as impactful as, as it no. might be, wow. considering that... Um, like, one of the best ways for Hunter to deal with Hunter is to play Hunter. And so a lot of times, like, oh, yeah, you can steal something with MC Tech, but then they kill your MC Tech and play Freezing Trap and Push Phase. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, it's nice that you're focusing on these little things. Go, Huffer. You got right. to choose you. You're in a room. Yeah, this, uh... I, I feel like RNG is uh, skewed, and it's based on players. Like, some player will get, like, 17 Huffers. The other one will like, get, like, 25 Mishas. The one will get all the Leox that nobody else wants. That's me. I pick up all the Leox. Someone has <laughs> oh, There to. you go, see? That's what I'm talking about. You're like the, the scapegoat of all the bad animal companions. Yeah. Wait, did he get a web spinner off the web spinner? I missed that. Turns out he did. There's another beast. Yeah. Oh, man. It's cool. Tavern Brawl's still going for some people. And this is so important for, for Hunter usually. You really want to play like those threats on curve. On 4, you want to usually play a Shredder. It's very important, but... He kind of skipped that one turn. This is this gives like a druid a chance to come back, you know. Yeah. It goes from like web spinner. To a yeah, the game has slowed down considerably too, and doesn't even have high main as his big threat to follow up in the mid game. Mm. But has a big difference, difference. <laughs> compared to Shredder. Mm. And he has I mean, the Harrison yeah. as well. Still looking bad for the druid so far because of. Just the nature of Hunter. Yeah. Just going face. And turn six is also not too bad for uh, Ecop. I mean, he's got the Houndmaster with the quick shot. So, like, using spot removal or the web spinner as a buffer for damage is also very easy. I don't think he's going to be in that much of trouble. Yeah. It's looking good for the, for the Hunter. Mm -hmm. But it could look even better. It always looks good for the Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> when, when does it not look good for the Hunter? It's kind of rare, right? Like. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if people will stop playing at some point, stop playing Druid in this tournament. Because whenever it's played, it just feels like it's losing too many games. Bring Aggro Priest, man. You will, you will just never lose to a Hunter ever again. Ever. Well, that's the thing, too. I think, um, I think some people feel like they have to bring Druid, but as soon as, like, if there really is some content coming out, that's when it's going to be really exciting to watch the tournament because mm -hmm. oh, yeah, then you start see. seeing like week by week people are tr trying out different decks. Like maybe everyone tries the same deck at the same time because everyone's watching each other. But then you might legitimately see some teams hiding stuff and not streaming things and like all of a sudden a new deck comes out. And it's really cool. And it's time for, yeah, this is like a card expansion. So it will be, a, the game will be a lot different. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Hitting face oh. seems okay. You have kill command and weapon <laughs> yeah, damage true. and burn. I was gonna say, do you think it's gonna do anything but go first? Yeah, like, I don't know why Ecop was like, hmm, maybe trade. <laughs> yeah. This feels bad, man. Yeah. This is the place. And this, uh, this could be like the entire series point for Cloud9 if this Hunter wins. Yeah. I mean, what if. Like, is the Shredder the only hope of Savis? Like, for it to really do something meaningful? Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, look at that MC tag. Pretty useless here. Mm -hmm. He could also... Yeah, he also could play Sludge Belcher and then Shredder Trade, like you said, and then hope something good comes out. Um, I mean, if if, if Savish could see Ecop's hand, he would concede. It's like the most, ni- yeah. the biggest nightmare hand you can imagine. Well, hold on, he doesn't actually have a beast to benefit off Kill Command except for the Web Spinner, and if it, it's a really expensive beast, you can't get the full value off of it. So he might still have a couple of turns, and he can heal with Ancient of Lore, and then he has like a big board. He might threaten Savage War if he picks up Force. He's like it's another not like be over. Look oh, at that. That's, that's decent. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not completely. Of- Mike's no. That's pretty good. Oh that well, the... that that's also not too bad. Um, this is Actually, like yeah. the most complicated like a turn we'll ever get for a hunter player. Wow, it looks really complex. You have some serious hunter hate, man. I no, but it looks like one of the more complex. Wary in all your decks, don't you? <laughs> no, but it's true. Like the the hunter decks seem to always have a very like somewhat straightforward play. I think it only becomes really tough when you're facing off against other hunters, where like every tiny decision like really starts mattering. Um, that's what I that's what I found very often. Shoot. Yeah, unleash skill command looks fine. Mm-hmm. It is off curve if you do that. Which is yeah, playing, that's why he was considering kind of like low tip quick shot and slow play it, but yeah, mm. because yeah, the knife struggle and leash next turn just seems so strong, and you really want to get the hero powers in at this. But he can dash. Oh, running out of time. E cop. No. So we decided to. Uh, Whoa. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. That's okay. That's good. That's good. Oof. Oh, he's uh. Well, Savic still has a chance then. Oh, yeah. Keeper, this means. MC2. Yeah, yeah. Pressure is gonna start piling on though, but. Hmm, I yeah, think Savic doesn't pro. care so much uh, about his minions being removed as much as if his life total. Yeah. Keeper BGH. Or MC Tech. Yeah. yeah, MC Tech is. Increasingly less useful, but he's already used Unleash. Uh, even if he plays something that could fill the board like Dr. Boom, he's got Big Game Hunter. Well, this weapon's not going to be... It's not going to do all that Ecob wants it to. Looks like he's just lo- uh, clearing the MC tag with the weapon and going low up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Seems like the most straightforward play and also probably the better one in this case. He still has like a um, lot of burst damage. Mm-hmm. Float up gets a hit in. Mm, let's see. H- see, heal back up to 18. The thing is, Harrison also is like gaining three life too. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah, exactly. It's not much weaker. Oh, so he could I next turn get something done. Say. The thing is, he's going to be so low on... Yeah, there's like 10 damage right there. So any other source of damage is going to be a, a uh, problem. And Maxna as well. Like, if you if you place a taunt, you punish him with Maxna. So then he has to trade everything into it. And you this, and you always usually expect, like, slightly less damage from a mid-range hunter than from a mm-hmm. base hunter. Mm-hmm. After seeing, like, Unleash and One Bow and Kill Command, you usually feel safe. A little bit safe. There's a lot of, um, I, I feel like there is still room for a comeback here, though. Yeah. If he goes like, for the trading game, it's yeah. possible. Because, again, yeah. if you just go face, you're afraid of getting comboed down immediately. So there's a reason why Ecop is probably considering just clearing the board a little bit. Yeah, as I said, like, I, I'm pretty sure Savish doesn't no. care about like his, any of his minions dying. He just wants his life to be as high as possible. Ooh. Oh, man. This no could way. be. This could get absolutely disgusting really quickly. Oh, if if that hits the BJs, it's that feels bad, man. It almost doesn't matter because Quickshot gets Harrison, yeah. which is you know, pretty solid as well. Oh man. Yeah, only f- only face would be terrible. Oh, oh my God! Drake and oh. swipe. Whoa! The, okay. the, he has even the BJs it. to proc whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. Well, 
Oh, but he, you want to no, proc no, no, the no, lore. He's gonna, he's gonna want to play Ancient of Lore and let that bounce back. Yeah. Right? Oh, man. This was this makes top deck to rule them all. That was it. That is exactly what he was looking for. Whoa! But that and, makes now, and now the Drew's looking good. Uh-oh, maybe oh, not oh, that. Baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. How often do we see that in competitive play? <laughs> All right, Black Knight off the top. Let's do it. To Let's go, it. boys. No, oh, okay. You can't kill it. You, you Sylvana said, right? <laughs> and then you just win. No, uh, I mean, he will die if you just play Sylvana, right? Yeah. I think you, you kind of... The thing is, like, Wait, there's a freezing trap and possibly a snake, right? So oh, yeah. hmm. he can't even kill it then. Yeah, he's got to like drill the claw, taunt up, and wait. Almost like do that and then play power yeah. shredder. See where or that maybe goes. Maybe even drew the claw, savage roar, and clear the board. That makes the wait. It's that doesn't look so bad for you, Cup, actually, because of makes them. Yeah, I can't believe I'm going to say that, but makes them might win a game. Oh, it's probably well, snake trap freezing, right? Yeah, he can clear the board though, right? If he drew the claw, savage roar, he um, charges it. And then he clears the board with the hero power on the Houndmaster afterwards. You're right, he can use two minutes to kill that Maxna, and then he's gonna be able to get the tempo back and heal himself up. You don't really wanna proc snakes though. Yeah, you those three little one ones are the problem. It probably is, yeah. It kinda has to be, no? I guess you could play explosive in that mid range, but I don't see that being very likely. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that Maxna. Is he gonna win him the game? It might. Oh, Three little man. snakes that could. That is pretty brutal. And he had to use the, the his only taunt for for that play. So yeah. those snakes, man. Five damage it's, right here. Is that the Leok top deck? Oh wow! Oh, so... That's the first card. <laughs> no, oh, Blizzard buffed Unleash the Hounds. <laughs> Did you know that? You used to be able to play Unleash the Hounds when there was no minions on your opponent's yeah, board. Yeah, on your board. What's up with that? Wow. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Isn't Force... I was gonna say, isn't Force better? But then I yeah, thought about I... Quick Shot and other stuff. He but he's seen, he's seen two bows, right? He used two Quick Shots, two bows, and there's one kill command left, I think. You don't play double Quick Shot. In yeah, Android. that's what I'm thinking. So, like, there's nothing that can really kill you. Oh, that top deck. It's pretty huge. No, but uh, Savage Roar ends the game. Number uh, Savage Roar number two ends the game. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it yeah. does. Believe right. in Miracles! Uh, Not today. Oof, uh, no. You have to wow, force wait, removal. Growth can still yeah, have pick up a keeper of the grove. Uh, yeah, but okay. So you wild growth first, and you check if you get the keeper, and if you don't, mm -hmm. then you force of nature for removal and wipe the board. Because oh, that really so leaves you with a clean board completely. You right? probably need to play pilot shredder. If you, but using force of nature is also your only like out, so to speak, right? Yeah. It's okay. so like that's your way you win next turn because there's so there's only so long you can stall before the hunter just presses for the win. Man, this game's so close. Then I don't see how he can he I don't see how he can get away with not playing force. I guess yeah, as you said, keep her the growth off the wild growth. But okay, like, what he's gonna need to do is have pilot shutter die and be vitality oh. totem. Oh man, I got through vitality now totems that's yesterday. One, one memorable way. <laughs> There's hope. Oh man, if that happens, the imagine losing because of vitality. <laughs> so now kill command is lethal, right? <laughs> but there's yeah. also like the weapon. Uh, not another weapon's lethal. There's He's a gone. lot. Oh, oh, oh man! I it comes think down to... if this is Leoc, it's still lethal. Yeah, there yeah, it, is. it is. So, uh, looks like uh, it wasn't the full comeback, but uh, the big story of the day: Savitz goes. 0-5 oh, with Druid. Yeah. Oh. I want to say I'm surprised, but I think uh, it's one of those you know weaker decks at the moment. Like it's not weak per se, but it's not it's not where it used to be. I mean, I, I know Eloise had that problem on the first week, like where I think she lost multiple games with her Druid. Yeah, yeah. and so did Oskaka, and mm -hmm. now Savitz. And yeah. uh, you know what? Now Savitz joins Gar in the 0-5 club. Hey. So I'm not now you have your second member. Yeah, but so he did it with him. one class though. I think it's more impressive. I have to give him oh, a oh, oh, oh man, that's right. He was very close to going 06 with one class. It's it's just the brutal nature of the format. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, if it wasn't Savitz, it could have easily been Sho or Nyria. 
um, yeah. based off the fact that you can't play the same class as some of your teammates. So one person will get a suboptimal lineup or they'll get two classes that they're not as good with or it's not good for the metagame. Um, so it's a team effort. It's really unfair to peg this on Savitz. It's like, yeah. in the end, Team Liquid had a druid that went in 0-5. It's not just him. No, I agree with you. I think it's more it's more down to the class at some point. With all, you know, the, the level of those players, it's not really necessarily the individual skill that comes into play. A lot of the I time, think Savitz played extremely well. Yep. Like he made, there were like a couple of very diff uh, difficult decisions and he made the right call. Yeah, I wouldn't say like... He's not the worst player today, yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right, well, that wraps up our uh, our first match here, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by, Guard. Do you have any final thoughts on the match overall? I think, I think we saw some very high level play overall. It was a very exciting and close match and yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. I love you all. Aw. Love you Aww, too. This is right, uh, cool. heartwarming. Well, uh, Noxious is going to probably stick around with me too. I think we have another guest caster. I believe it is Brian Kibler. He's going to be hopping on for our next match. Who do we have, Noxious? Uh, we're going to be seeing, uh, I think it's going to be Nihilum versus Celestial. So it's going to be Life Coach, Thais, and RDU versus Tiddler, Frozen Ice, and Silent Storm. Uh, I think uh, week one, you know, the Celestial team had a bit of a rough time. Uh, Tiddler, actually, the coach, had the roughest of times. RD had a bit of a, like, his own, I guess, 1-3 score. He wasn't very satisfied with, but I, he said that his team supported him, so um, it didn't really play too much into his ability to play well. So we'll see if they can uh, get another win this week. Feels like every match, every yeah. match, there's at least one person... That's down in the dumps, and we'll find out who that's going to be right after this <laughs> break. You're watching the ATLC. <laughs> Pirates, I only can imagine Dread Corsair being used, but there's no synergy between Pirates. Maybe they should be buffed. Awful, awful. Remove from the game, please. Are you ready for this, guys? Or are you motherfucking entertained? There's Pikmon. No! <laughs> no! Pirates? Oh, that sounds like some decks the arenas like to play. Pirates need more pirates. There's not enough of them. Fun, but under, uh, yeah, too, too weak. Blizzard buff, please.